spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com Lock it here for more live content. Free Talk Live is next on the Liberty Radio Network. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Kate Sickle. And I'm Rick Young. Today is Friday, April 4th, 2014. Radio VR News. The nation mourns the tragic loss of lives at Fort Hood, Texas. Flags are flying at half staff on Capitol Hill to honor the victims of Wednesday shootings at the Army base. Steve Coleman reports. Congressional leaders called for all flags at the Capitol to be lowered Thursday and remain at half staff until sunset Friday. In his prayer opening Thursday's Senate session, Chaplain Barry Black asked God to please be near to the families of the victims of the Fort Hood shooting. On the House side, Congressman John Carter said, I would like to ask the House to join me in a moment of silence and hopefully prayer for the entire Fort Hood community. Steve Coleman, Washington. Crews investigating a radiation leak in the government's underground nuclear waste dump near Carlsbad, New Mexico, hope to make a second trip into the Half Mile Repository later today. Correspondent Ross Simpson explains. Officials say workers who went into the waste isolation pilot plant on Wednesday to install air monitors and communications equipment found no airborne radiation. On Friday, however, they say workers are prepared to encounter contamination as they make their way deep into the mine. If all goes well, officials say that should set the stage for a third entry when crews will try to figure out what caused the release of radiation? I'm Ross Simpson. A bill to renew jobless benefits for the long-term unemployed is heading for a final vote in the Senate. Correspondent Jerry Bodlander has the details. The bill would renew the benefits for more than 2 million Americans who've been out of work for more than 26 weeks and whose benefits have run out since December when the program expired. It cleared the final procedural hurdle with one vote to spare. The yeas are 61, the nays are 35. All the no votes came from Republicans. Unhappy Democrats won't allow votes on some of their employment proposals. Senate passage is set for Monday, though there is little indication the GOP-controlled House will consider the measure. Jerry Bodlander, Capitol Hill. Observers are looking for better numbers over February when the Labor Department releases its monthly unemployment report. Correspondent Warren Levinson has the details. Economists anticipate the March numbers will show a job market continuing to thaw out. I expect a good report. John Sylvia, chief economist at Wells Fargo Securities, expects job creation to come in at 198000 with hours worked, wages, and participation all up. What we want to see is more jobs and that the average wage being paid is also up. And that combination gives you a nice boost to personal income. Sylvia says short-term unemployment rates are recovering to where they were a decade ago, but the economy remains grim for those out of work a long time. Warren Levinson, New York. Who doesn't want a pay hike? Believe it or not, Congress. Lawmakers in Congress are again making moves to freeze their pay. Correspondent Carlotta Bradley explains why our elected officials are saying no to that raise. House leaders are engineering another freeze in lawmakers' automatic cost-of-living pay hike. Their proposal would freeze congressional salaries at $174,000 a year and is attached to legislation to fund Congress's budget. It was approved by a House appropriations panel. Lawmakers haven't gotten a pay increase since 2009, with Congress voting to deny itself the raise for five straight years. The scheduled 1.6 percent hike would give lawmakers a raise of about $2,800. Carlotta Bradley, Washington. He was a World War II hero who became president. Now those waiting to visit a national monument to honor former President Dwight Eisenhower are going to have to wait a while longer. 
correspondent Jackie Quinn tells us why. The National Capital Planning Commission rejected the current design for a memorial to honor President Eisenhower. The vote is in line with the family's objections to the architect's design. Massive columns holding large stainless steel tapestries framing an expansive memorial park with statues of Eisenhower as president and as a general at the center. The Planning Commission chairman voted for changes to be reviewed every two months, agreeing with those who say it's time to stop the endless debate over a memorial. Jackie Quinn, Washington. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. And in a surprise announcement this morning, U.S. Deputy Surgeon General Greg Paulson stated that, quote, it's fine to smoke cigarettes if you only smoke while drinking. The Deputy Surgeon General has called the press conference to discuss the shocking findings, which began just moments ago. Let's go live to that now. Was there a particular study this report was based on? Look, that, that determination was made after considering that someone who only smokes when at bars or parties ends up smoking maybe 15 cigarettes a month. What? While regular smokers are smoking 150 to 200 cigarettes each week. So we feel that it's just obvious that as long as you don't actually buy the cigarettes and you only smoke them while consuming the alcohol, then the risks of getting lung cancer are basically mostly negligible. Just common sense. Now this announcement comes on the heels of the Surgeon General's last announcement that drinking and driving is fine if you ate a lot that day or if it's a route you take all the time sober. Moving on, the Japanese Space Agency has announced plans to put a schoolgirl on the moon by 2015. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. It's the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live, and normally we have Stephanie and and Brian sitting in the studios on Sundays, but, well, they're off at a Bitcoin event, which, uh, you know, has become really important. Stephanie co-hosts Let's Talk Bitcoin, and so, you know, that's that's bread and butter. (laughs) She's got to go to these Bitcoin events. So I've got Daryl sitting in. Well, Stephanie and Brian were here Friday, so people could still get their weekly dose of... Stephanie and the Golden Triple Black Stallion. Yes, I heard the uh, I heard the show, and we have to talk about all the problems of marriage. <laughs> oh, marriage! Oh, whatever. Eight fifty five four fifty free. It's really it's really dragging this nation down. The institution of marriage. Good lord, that's our problem. Uh, what we've got uh, on the plate this evening is a bunch of ludicrous stuff. And here's one of the things that I wonder. I wonder. Has this nation gone crazy? Has the world gone crazy? Because I don't, I don't think that the kind of things that we're going to be reading tonight necessarily happen in other countries. Maybe I'm completely wrong. But this seems to me to be, uh, I mean, just it's so insane. And I just don't hear these kind of things happening in, in other places. I don't know, Mark. I read something last night I don't know what country it was in because the article was poorly written and didn't mention, but all of the people had very Arabic-sounding names, and it was an article about a nine-month-old that was charged with attempted murder. Yeah, I did hear that. Uh, I, did, I did see that article. It would, I think it was in Pakistan uh, where that one occurred, and it was, uh, it was very strange stuff. Yeah. Of course, uh, as I understand, the charges were dropped, and the police officer was uh, was um, chastened for bringing charges against a nine-month-old. Um, and I guess there were other people that were tr- throwing rocks at him and stuff, but it was just really strange. Right, the right. No, was con- my, my understanding from having read the article, and again, as I said, it was very poorly written. It sounded as though the grandfather went somewhere with the nine-month-old and something happened to where they were cutting people's gas lines. And, well, the nine-month-old is here. We've got to charge him. That's kind of how it happened. So this story I've got here is uh, from uh, Philadelphia. Um, It's, uh, let's see, I've got it uh, from libertycrier.com. And it's a two-year-old has been charged $50, given a $50 ticket 
for tinkling in a piece in an area of grass outside I'm sort of in a walk area. So here in Keene, New Hampshire, they call that effluence. Okay. Um now this I, I don't care what they call it anywhere. Sometimes children when when they're, you know, very they're young, right? Like they gotta go. They as a parent, you don't know how long they can hold it and just kind of one of those situations so i've actually i've queued up the audio here and it may or may not be that I, um it's going to come through because i don't know that much about this particular uh computer but we'll see uh when you gotta go hey. you gotta go and a two-year-old got his first summons his crime peeing in public his mother says she was in a clothing store in philadelphia and kid needed to use the bathroom but the store told him mm, no so the boy went over tried to walk hold it as much as he could and then like a little boy does they have to pee so he took care of business officer approached him handing him a fifty dollar ticket in public for urination his mother says she's not going to fight this ticket not about the fifty dollars it's not the issue for me it's i want a place that feels friendly to me that my children will feel safe and have positive experiences with police officers. Mm. So she said she's, her mother is now going to fight this ticket, not not going to fight this ticket. Yeah, it sounded as, as though the reporter said the mother is not going to fight. It just sounded like the reporter said the mother is not going to fight. And so there was no real, you know, if you're from certain areas in the country, nah could be now and nah could be not. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, so from what I can tell, the mother is going to fight this. And uh, it's this is it's insane. It's just insane. And I don't know. It's from the cops going after lemonade stands to, uh, you know, I mean, we've, we've, uh, we've seen stories where they're destroying basketball hoops and all kinds of things. And it's like, I, I mean, are they just hiring unqualified people? What's happening? Does, does anybody support this? First, I suppose I should ask this. If you support the ticketing of a two-year-old little boy Tinkling, um, and uh, uh, nobody's listening uh, can really, I mean, maybe you've seen the story, maybe you haven't, but I'm going to try to explain. The, the, so sometimes the sidewalks have this little strip of grass between the sidewalk and the street. It's not exactly a median, but it's sort of functionally a median for the side between the sidewalk and the street. So it's just a little strip of grass in there. There was a fire hydrant in this particular strip of grass. That's where dogs go. Dogs tinkle there, and no one gets a ticket for it, right? Um, and this little boy... Decided, you know, let's not forget that they didn't have a bathroom in this business, and sometimes businesses don't have public restrooms. Are business, businesses required to have bub- public restrooms? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But I know the answer is when you're two years old and you have to go to the bathroom, let's go right now. That's the answer. And so this little boy decided, he, you know, of his own volition, I guess, uh, went out there, tinkled. I assume his mother was nearby. I would not allow my son to just wander out of a store on his own, uh, standing within a few inches of the street, tinkling on a fire hydrant. Right. It wouldn't be. But I would stand there. I would stand there and I'd hold his hand. And I would be proud to do so, to stand as his protector in, an, in a situation where he may feel vulnerable. And... I would attempt to shame any law enforcement officer that came up. I would pull out a camera. I would ask him for his badge number. Listen, listen, I need to know who you are. My badge number's on the ticket. Yeah. uh, Great. What's your name? Officer. Officer what? Officer, I just gave you a ticket. Now get out of here and give us money. I'm citizen. I pay your paycheck, and you're going to tell me who you are. Now you're being disorderly. I was born disorderly. Now you're under arrest. I've got this on video, and we're just going to find out what your commanding officer has to say. Oh, and now you're wiretapping. Please, put me in the back of your car and take me to him. Put my two-year-old in, too. Handcuff him now that you've given him a $50 ticket, because I want this on TV so your mom can see this, you stinking excuse for a law enforcement officer. It's so disgusting, the way these guys operate. Mom's going to be so proud. Right. The the officer that handed out this ticket has a mother, and I can't, and, and he was too. I assume it was a him. I don't, I don't know for certain the gender of this officer. It's ridiculous. It's, it's beyond the pale. And we have a whole lineup of stories this evening of news of, I'd call it news of the weird, because sometimes weird <laughs> things happen. But this isn't weird. These are people. People empowered by the government, given badges and power. 
not always it's not always cops. There's there's lots of enforcement bureaucrats out there. Yes. And they're all about as accountable as the next one, which is to say very, they're not. Yeah, almost entirely unaccountable. If you try to sue any of them, then it's going to get thrown out and the court is going to say, well, they have this immunity and that immunity and this other one. Oh, and I just made one up. And I wonder, because it, it seems to me that there's a good chance that every other person listening to this show right now has had a situation with a police officer or some other government bureaucrat that was just stupid. I, I mean, I've had several, and I'm, I'm not an extraordinary individual. I mean, there's no reason they would particularly be bothering me. I've had several. One time I was walking along the street. It was in the evening, maybe 10 p.m., and an officer pulled me, stopped and talked to me, um, you know, like asked me a bunch of questions about walking at night. Well, I don't have my car. It was, yeah, Why don't I'm you have 16. a car? And they wanted to look at my camera that I had. And, of course, I turned it over to them because I didn't know any better. Just hassling and hassling me. And it's ridiculous. I think that this goes on far too often. And no one calls them to account. This officer should be held to account for hassling this two-year-old. I wonder how this little, little boy is going to grow up. Is he going to grow up respecting police officers as heroes? As Probably people that, not. As people he can go to when, he, uh, when he's you know, scared or alone? I don't know. I think that's getting ruined. I think it's getting ruined by a generation of terrible police officers. Yes. What do you think? 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. People are waking up. People are saying no to GMO, gluten, toxins, and sugars. The masses are moving to holistic, natural, and organic foods and supplements. Life Change Tea is a non-GMO, gluten-free product that helps your body overcome sickness and obesity. You need to order to experience the change. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Or call us at 928-308-0408. Again, 928-308-0408. You need to order to experience your health change. GetTheTea.com. Remember how bad your allergies were last year? When they hit again, be prepared with new Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour, the first full-strength 24-hour prescription nasal spray available without a prescription. Unlike antihistamines, it blocks more of the body's chemical responses that cause nasal allergy symptoms, relieving the worst of them, including congestion, for 24 hours. New Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour stops more of what makes you miserable. Use as directed may take up to one week of daily use to feel the most symptom relief. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 357 Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burgridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-453. That's the Pro XPN call in line. 855-450-3733. It's Mark with you. And Daryl. Like I said, uh, um, normally Stephanie and Brian here, they're they're out for, I guess, a Bitcoin event and uh, be away this weekend. So And next. And next all weekend also. Yeah, indeed. So it's us here on Free Talk Live. Um, you can give us a call at 855-450-FREE. Talk about whatever is on your mind. But what we brought in, uh, we had this gaggle of stories that were, you know, only related by their ludicrousness. Their sort of petty ludicrousness. This first one was a uh, situation with a two-year-old who was ticketed $50. I assume his the expectation is his mother will have to take care of that. Yeah, that that's actually the title of the article is child's mother given fifty dollar ticket after two year old tinkled on the street. Yeah, and and it, the ticket is for public urination. It's not for your child publicly urinating. It's for public urination. So, you, the, the the mother should have made the officer give it to the kid. Yeah. You know, my son, uh, you know, he loves Legos, and the Lego City things is full of cops, and he likes them, likes them. And I, I can't imagine what a situation like this would make him think about a police officer. Now, I don't want to taint his view of the world. It's not what I'm looking to do. But I'll call out inanity when I see it. And people, you know, they're beasts that tend to group folks together. You know, they'd say, well, this group does this and this group does that. That's kind of what they do. I, I'm curious what your son thinks about judges. I don't know that he knows anything about them. Well, he was at the one hearing for something, the Robin Hood trial, I believe, and the judge yelled at you and threatened to arrest you for not getting up to leave fast enough. I don't think that he, my son, even recognized that that man had any significance. Okay. You know, I mean, I mean, he's just a guy sitting behind a desk. Um, my son's seen plenty of live theater. This was just boring live theater to him, I'm sure. It was boring live theater to me as well. Yeah, it's just that lives hang in the balance. Yeah. Um, one of the problems. And yes, uh, the judge did yell at us and threaten to throw me in jail because my son made some noise while we were getting up to leave. We were getting up to leave. I made that clear. The judge said... You must say one more thing, and I'll throw you in jail. I, I you know, I, uh-huh. oh yeah. I said I, in in between. I said, oh great, now scar him for life. Why don't you? Um, I believe I said that in in between, and that's when he said, "You say one more thing, I'll throw you." Yes, because he doesn't have anything to say to that. But anyway, that judge also uh, uh, ruled recently that apparently, uh, when people put in a referendum, that politicians can just screw that ref- referendum up as much and as they the, want. The interesting thing is there was another court decision three years ago regarding the same thing, and the other court ruled that putting the word not before the verb 
definitely eliminates the subject matter. Okay, so if you're going to talk about it, then we actually do have to explain it. So in this case, um, there was a school board uh, meeting thing. School district yep. uh, deliberative session. And you're allowed to enter in sort of referendum type things? Uh, it's called a warrant article, but yeah, it's pretty much the same thing, where if you get 25 valid signatures then your warrant article goes on the ballot for a vote. Right. But they decided to just pencil whip the hell out of your ballots. They, um, they, you know, for ones that said that, uh, you know, ab- the above article, they put them at the top so that it was no above article. article and and then they amended it to make it strictly advisory. Yep. Um, so they took the teeth out of it. Um, and and then- there were four where the word remove and repeal were uh, stricken. Amended to say ratify. Yeah. So, so they actually changed the entire, the, the made the meaning of the thing op, the opposite. And a judge ruled, oh, that's fine. That's so fine. 25 citizens of this town needed to, d- to put this in, and these people just whipped right, the rug right out from underneath them. But, and then they praised democracy in the process. But if you put the word not before the verb, that does eliminate the subject matter, but changing the verb to be the opposite is okay. Well, it's it's obvious it's insanity, and, right. and this is you know, but this is that what we're talking about there. That's the normal sort of uh, political hooliganism that's gone on for as long as people have been able to, you know, as long as there's been politics, people have done whatever they could to uh, disenfranchise other people from the process and that's there's nothing unusual there but there's a, these stories where sort of crazy things happen this one with the uh, two-year-old ticketed for peeing in public daryl you said you had a situation where the police held a held a gun on you for r- robbing yourself uh yeah I, I actually have two instances to where cops thought that i robbed myself the first is the one where the cop pulled the gun on me i was working not not really a Third shift, I, I went into work at 4 o'clock in the morning, got off at noon, would go to bed about 5 or 6. And I saw people walking around on my front porch before I went to bed. So I opened the door to see who's walking around on the porch. Because it, it was a shared porch between other apartments in the building. But still, you know, like, who's walking around on my porch? Yeah. Open the door, and I'm greeted with a gun about 6 inches away from my face and a police officer yelling, drop the stereo. What are you talking about? And then, you know, question about identification. I was like, I live here. Uh, I've got to walk inside to grab a driver's license to show you who I am. And she had the gun still drawn while I went in and grabbed my wallet. And then she yells around to the side. He's on the porch. and like, So a bunch of people with guns come. I, I think that they were getting ready to, like, bust in the window on the side of my apartment to come in. And, yeah, so then wound up, oh, okay, everything's okay. And then a couple of months later, another situation to where I, you know, got stopped, this time actually stopped while driving by a police officer who thought that I had robbed myself Because I walked out of my front door with a bag of laundry, tossed it in my truck, got in my truck, and took off driving down the street. Pull around the corner, like half a block up, lights come on. What's going on? Cop walks up to the passenger door with his hand on his gun. Mm -hmm. Knocks on the window. I had to lean over to roll it down. And he's still got the hand on the gun. Like, what are you doing in this neighborhood? Sort of questions, and then... I love those questions. Ultimately, here's your $10 ticket for not wearing your seatbelt. Have a nice day. Mm. 10 bucks, huh? Yeah, that's I all see. it is in Alabama. I see. <laughs> they should make it a $1 fine, and then no, they never hand it out. It wouldn't even bother. It's a one-penny fine. Um, yeah, I, it's it's it, these, are, these are absolutely ludicrous stories. You have one that uh, you brought in, too, right? Yeah, there was a woman down in Massachusetts who was arrested for a $5 fine, or not a fine, a $5 uh, dog registration that she was late on the payment. 
and wound up getting arrested. Oh, we had a story like that a couple of weeks ago of a woman who, uh, who, who was thrown in jail because she didn't go to court for some dogs that had gotten loose. It's amazing. 855 450 free. Can you defend this behavior? Is law and order going to crumble if we don't hand out tickets for nonsense? 855 450 free. I am a 47 year old female and had a heart attack in 2005. This is Alice from New Jersey. I still get angina, even with four stents. I was taking nitro two or three times a week. The very first day after taking heart and body extract, the chest pain was gone. Now I don't wear a nitro patch. Learn the secrets of an effective, natural, 100% organic nutritional supplement for a healthy heart and circulation at hbextract.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Are you making sense to the boomer mindset? I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com. 80 million baby boomers comprise 25% of the population and control most of the USA's wealth. As aging parents pass on, they'll control more. Boomers are 46 to 65 years old and regard themselves as midlife. They identify as neither young nor old. They're post minivan and pre retirement. And they don't like being called boomers. They think me. Many of the purchases boomer couples make are individual purposes. They've been experimenters all their lives. If you want their attention, tell stories and keep it simple. If something seems complicated, boomers can dismiss it as, I don't need this. And if you're looking for work, you may be applying to a boomer, so relate accordingly. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can call in with whatever's on your mind. Here in the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live, we've been talking about sort of ludicrous things going on in the in this country, and I feel like I don't know. 
I don't know if this kind of thing happened a generation ago, but it seems like the 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 extra hiring that's gone on with police officers have put in some really unqualified individuals. And I don't know why. Yeah, I, and a lot of it seems to be that the police departments are specifically targeting people just getting back from Iraq and Afghanistan to where, you know, like everybody you encounter is an enemy because you're in a war zone. And so you're going to be on a completely different mindset transferring from a job to where everybody's the enemy to where you're supposedly there to protect and serve, but people are still acting like everybody is the enemy. And whatever transition period it takes for a soldier to become a police officer, we all have to bear the cost, right? I mean, it, it, the, the legal system hasn't shown itself over time to be particularly good at policing the police. Those that watch the watchers, well, they're generally the watchers themselves. And, right. it, you know, just what we've seen is it's not an incredibly efficient system. You can give us a call at 855-450-FREE if you've had any kind of crazy cop stories or whatever, um, you know, crazy bureaucrat stories, because this isn't limited by any stretched imagination to police, um, whatever's on your mind. That phone line's brought to you by ProXPN, and what ProXPN is is a virtual private network. You use it to encrypt your traffic from your computer to the website to which you intend to go. It makes it so your internet service provider, the the company that provides you with your internet, doesn't know where you're going, doesn't know what you're doing because it's encrypted. Because these companies, I think by law, they have to encrypt a certain amount of months worth of your activity. That way, if the federal government or whatever policing organization comes to them and says, hey, cough it up, well, they've got it right there. And you never know. There's interesting stories about people who having been targeted for their searches because they they could be terrorists because of the things they looked up on the internet. I don't need that in my life. I don't need them building a case that is erroneous against me. And that's one of the reasons I like uh, Pro XPN. Another is, uh, you know, I mean, what you think you're doing, and I, I have to research all kinds of crazy things. I'm a talk show host. I'm looking up th- all kinds of odd things on a regular basis. Don't you as a listener want to know how easy or hard it is to find out how to make a bomb on the internet? Who do you rely on to give you that information? Well, if Free Talk Live is one of your go-to sources for information, you're relying on me. So I need to be able to answer the question, how hard is it to find out information on how to make a bomb on the internet? Well, you know. I'm not interested in somebody saying that, uh, well, something blew up within 50 miles of my house. It must be my fault because I searched how to make a bomb on the internet. That's the kind of crappy cop work that um, that I'm concerned with. And if you're concerned with those things, plus, let's not forget if you're, you know, in a, uh, at some institution somewhere that blocks internet, uh, you know, you going to certain places. You need to be able to get to the, you know, you, you want to be able to get the information you want to be able to get to. That's what the internet's about, providing with the information you need today. It's like Not a, even an institution, but sometimes... Internet cafes yeah, yeah. or restaurants will block off certain websites that they deem to be inappropriate. Yeah, that makes some sense. I mean, I can see why you would want to do that. But I also, you want to get to the websites you want to get to. A lot of times, Free Talk Live will get blocked on many of these things. I know Free Talk Live's blocked on several, several bus- businesses and governmental um, websites. And that leaves us with the last one. You're talking about uh, cafes, airports, places like this. People get online. They forget they forget that they're putting their public information out there. Somebody's searching the, uh, you know, looking at the traffic that you've got going between this and the public router. They've got all your info. You need a virtual private network, and ProXPN can do it and do it very uh, elegantly and cheaply. You go to proxpn.com slash FTL. When you purchase the premium program there, uh, use coupon code FTL20. You'll get 20% off for the lifetime of your account. Every single month or year, however you pay. You pay the annual way, it's 5 bucks a month. It's really inexpensive. And you can pay with Bitcoin and get an additional 30% off. ProXPN.com slash FTL. And that they bring us the phone lines at uh, 855-450-FREE. So you were going to tell us this uh, bizarre story here? Yes, out of Holyoke, Massachusetts, which is not too terribly far away from here, 
A woman named Ann Musser was arrested at her home and spent four and a half hours in jail because she was tardy in paying her $5 dog license fee. Well, actually, the Holyoke City clerk assured the author of this article that Miss Musser was actually arrested on an outstanding warrant for failure to appear in court over the tardy $5 dog license fee. Musser is a little preoccupied these days. This is how the this is the the um, uh, the progression of violence. So people will say, "Oh, you didn't get in trouble for this or that." No, it wasn't about the dog license fee. It's about going to court for the dog license fee. If you think, "Oh, this is a five dollar problem, whatever," this they'll just send me a fine. I'll pay it off. I don't need to go to this court. Well, surprise! That guy wearing the silly black muumu up there, that guy thinks he's pretty hot stuff. Well, and he thinks that you've got to be in an appointment with him. Now, I understand it's not very nice if somebody misses an appointment. But it's not like you set the appointment. They set it for you. Hold on. But the thing is, Mark, she actually went to court. Oh, God. Did she? Was she so deaf she didn't hear him call him? Call Hold her? on. I've, I've seen that. I've seen them arrest somebody who was too deaf to hear them call their name. Miss Musser is preoccupied with ovarian cancer. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Which may explain why she put the $5 administrative fee on the back burner. But then again, it's common it's common practice in Massachusetts to refer people to court after they've ignored or simply missed a notice of tickets for even the pettiest of offenses. And it since, is called Taxachusetts for a reason. And since petty offenses have proliferated, including non-payment of fees for the most mundane of activities, court referrals and encounters with the police over BS are not uncommon. Uh, Musser and her husband are also repeat offenders, according to the city clerk, referring to the dog license issue. Licenses for dogs are required by the state of Massachusetts and by the city of Holyoke. The city clerk said, this is not about the collection of administrative fees. This is a violation of the city ordinance. So going down to the court thing, uh, Musser told the local newspaper that she paid the $5 license fee and the $25 late fee, but only after the court proceedings had already begun. She claims she attempted to appear in court and cooled her heels in a courtroom for three hours. Wouldn't doubt it at all. But left after her complaints that seating a woman with a faltering immune system in a crowd might be less than brilliant, and that fell on deaf ears. Yeah, they could care less. Everybody who works at that court system feels completely unresponsible for this woman going to jail over a late dog license. Hey, lady, we got the rules. I'm just here doing my job. You know, and it's true. If one, any one of them said, I can't live with myself anymore. I can't be part of a, a system that throws an old woman in jail for a d- late dog license. I can't do it. Well, if they quit, then somebody else will just take the paycheck and the bennies themselves. Because this is how the government works. Government uses force on you and tempts other people into the the process with promises of money and benefits. So People, People that don't actually do anything productive in the process. After complaining and being there for three hours, armed men were sent to nab her because she chafed at remaining in court. 855-450 855-450 free ludicrous cop stories. You think this is appropriate? 855-450 free. Everybody wants to know, what can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is, and it's at bitcoingeneralstore.com. BitBrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything with free shipping. What can you find at BitcoinGeneralStore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical Bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. 
The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. You gotta see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. It's time for a home security quiz. What effective home security device is smaller than a coffee cup, fakes out burglars into thinking someone is home at your house while you're away, plugs into any wall outlet, is recommended by many police departments, and sells for less than $30? Yes, it's fake TV. This year, about one in every 50 U.S. homes will have a break-in, with burglars usually picking the easy target, a dark house that looks like no one is home. Fake TV is a small electronic security device that makes it look like someone is home watching TV by simulating the light from a real TV. Fake TV could be the difference between coming home to a secure house or one that's been ransacked. To get your fake TV for only $29.95 with free shipping, go to faketv.com or call 1-877-5-FAKE-TV. That's 877-532-5388 or go to faketv.com. Fake TV, the burglar deterrent. Free Talk Live. It's not just zoning rules. It's everything. It's true. It's everything. There's there's so many rules. There's so many laws. You can't possibly know them. It's physically an impossibility to know the laws. You know not to hurt other people. I don't need a law telling me to do that. But the rest of them? Totally inaccessible. (laughs) It's true. It's written in legalese. If you don't have training in reading that crap, it might as well be a foreign language. Mm. And as you pointed out, it doesn't matter if you can read it. I thought I had them dead to rights. And (laughs) these bureaucrats, (laughs) they just, they just like, no, we do whatever we want here at the zoning board. Yeah, that's right. And you'll kiss our butts. Peon. Surf. (laughs) Slave. You'll do what we say. Yeah. Why label them citizens? Why not just call it what it is? You're a serf. You're a slave. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-453. You can give us a call, talk about whatever's on your mind. I'll give you that number again. It's 855-450-3733. That's how you sort of use the numbers to spell out free. <laughs> also, you can, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's like phones. they got these weird numbers on them, and I, I don't know. That's uh, it's just the thing. You, you put words instead of numbers. 855-450-FREE, brought to you by ProXPN. You can also use Skype. We are lrn.fm. That says LRN as in Liberty Radio Network. Dot .fm that's our username you send us a contact request we'll approve it during the show it's just that easy and then you can uh, call us on Skype and frankly the audio better um Skype much yeah just great audio <laughs> so you can give us a call there at 855 450 free the reason that I live in New Hampshire and Daryl I believe it's the same reason for you is because I joined the Free State Project yes now the Free State Project is a project to move 20,000 folks to New Hampshire 
uh, there's a five year window once we reach the number twenty thousand. We're currently at like fifteen thousand five hundred and fifty five or something like that. Some number like that. Um, and we're you know on the way to hitting twenty thousand. Maybe next year. Maybe the year after. Not a hundred percent sure. But it's it's happening. And uh, the idea is to get 20,000 people that believe sort of similar stuff. Not the same by any stretch of the imagination, but similar stuff. The idea that the maximum role of government should be the protection of life, liberty, and property. That's a pretty noble-sounding cause. Yes. What happens if you get 20,000 people like that in the state? Well, I can tell you what happens if you get 1,500. You see some dramatic changes. You see the, uh, the, the production of media, liberty media. This is the center of the... Me, liberty Media Production Universe. More people producing Liberty Media in New Hampshire than anywhere else in the world. You see legislation, uh, s- some bad legislation being uh, turned around. A little bit, here and there. But what you see mostly is a libertarian veto in the New Hampshire House. No bill goes through without passing through the 80 reps that are part of the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. That's a pretty powerful caucus, and you can't claim that anyplace else. You would say that there's probably more civil disobedience going on in New Hampshire for the, the liberty liberty movement type civil disobedience than any place else, too. Now, you can say what you want about that civil disobedience. Some people have, <laughs> have less than positive things to say about it. Nonetheless, it is happening. And that's what makes the Free State Project unique. And you can come and join us at our, our big annual event, the Porcupine Freedom Festival. It's a camping event out in the woods in Lancaster, New Hampshire, once a year. It's going to be from June 22nd to 29th, and you can find out more by by going to porkfest.org. It's the Porcupine Freedom Festival. That's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com, porkfest.com. And we've been talking about kind of crazy stories of government bureaucrats and things that happen. There was We just talked about a woman who uh, was arrested for being late for a dog fine, uh, fine for her dog license, or not the fine, the, the license fee. She was a couple of days late for the license fee, and, um, you know, she sat in court for three hours, felt like because she has a, a, a compromised immune system, because she's got ovarian cancer, she's on chemotherapy and stuff like that, sitting around in a big group of people. It was a bad idea, so she left. And I've been to court in Massachusetts, and I can say that it's not well ventilated. Yep. So they threw Very her in jail. stagnant air. Yeah, so jail is too. So that's where they threw her. Uh, we also had a two-year-old who was ticketed for peeing in public um, in a little grassy area. It's real nice. And here's another one, another great one. Got an 11-year-old building a tree fort, says an officer pulled a gun on him and his friends. This is uh, from prisonplanet.com, but I did check the original source. The original source doesn't have the verbiage here um, transcribed, so the, the original source is wsbtv.com. And so this legit story, it says, according to 911 records, Henry County police were called after a neighbor noticed the children chopping chopping off limbs from a tree, an activity that she claimed was hurting the environment and creating tripping hazards. I suppose there's an argument to be had there. Police arrived on the scene to find 11-year-old Omari Grant and his friends playing in a small patch of trees. Now, I did this when I was a kid. We We called them forts, but they were really just big big bushes that we'd go around in and climb in and, yeah. you know, move around some stuff that maybe homeless people left there. I'm not even sure what it was, but we called them forts. Now, just to pause you for a second, when you said tripping hazard, something totally different popped into my head, uh-huh. and I guess it you know says something about the crowd of people that I hang around. I, I was immediately wondering how cutting limbs out of a tree would affect one with like ingesting LSD. Yeah, that wasn't what the case was. Yeah. So anyway, it's it's the children uh the the police officer said Oh, I'm sorry. I, I missed the, the spot here. In a patch of trees, they prompting at least one officer to reportedly draw his firearm and force the boys onto the ground. I'm thinking this is an overreaction here. I was thinking I don't want to be shot today, so I just listened to what they said, Grant said. As the uh, the child lay face down, the officer allegedly screamed profanities as he forced them to spread their arms and legs. Grant's mother, uh, Janice Baptiste, detailed her son's experience in an interview to WSB-TV. All he could do was get out at, at the time um, was, Mom, he had a gun in my face. He had a gun in my face. So my son was, of course, traumatized by that. After the children were searched, Grant was taken back to his home by the officer. 
who was uh, startled Batiste with his unstable appearance. He just came up with this attitude, such a I'm a whole physical appearance of I'm a big Mr. Big and Bad. Grant says he was now um, he is now hesitant to play outside with his um, in his own neighborhood, afraid, afraid of the very police that he once looked up to. I learned that they're supposed to help you and not make you feel scared to even come outside. Edgar Dillard, whose wife made the 911 call, was uh, reportedly stunned to hear the neighbor boy's encounter with the police. Yeah, that's uh, pretty shocking to hear the gun was pulled on a child, Dillard said. Baptiste was uh, filed an excessive force complaint with the department, which is now open an internal investigation. When questioned about the officer's actions, Sergeant Joey Smith remained relatively tight-lipped. You know, you're not going to comment on this kind of thing. It could open us up to a lawsuit. If it was justified, then we'll deal with it. If it wasn't, we'll address that as well. So there you go. Officer may very well have been justified in pulling a gun on 11 on 11 year olds and making them lie down in the dirt because they were playing um, and building tree forts. I, I I just don't know where we get this stuff. Uh, I'm at a loss for words here. It's not like the kid had a weapon. He may have had what a saw to get rid of some limbs, maybe a hatchet. But it's not like he was, you know, like running around trying to hatchet people walking down the sidewalk. He could have flung- or saw a woman in a half on the sidewalk without her consent. He could have flung that hatchet like a tomahawk and cleaved our officer right through the skull. I don't know. An 11-year-old? Yeah, and I could reach over and grab the envelope opener and Stab jab in my you neck. in the eyeball or in the temple. It could happen. I mean, this is these are the these are certainly the problems. A this meteor is- could hit the studio in the next five minutes. Are we going to draw weaponry on the sky just because something could fall out of the sky? Well, I, I would think that you would. I, I would hope that we're hiring law enforcement officers that can handle eleven-year-olds building tree forts. And apparently, in this case, we're not. And it's disturbing. It's a disturbing trend where they're handing out tickets to two-year-olds that are peeing in grassy spots that apparently dogs can pee in all day, but kids can't. Uh, two-year-olds can't. No, yeah, because dog wiener is different than little kid wiener I hope somehow. We're, hope we're talking about wiener dogs here. 855 450 free. It's um I mean it's I don't know what to do. I, I don't know what one does when one's in how do we stop this what appears to be a vortex of stupid that has surrounded the government as though i don't know i mean i don't know maybe it's always been stupid maybe they've always been doing these things i only have the uh the perspective of a person who's 43 years old i don't know have they been pulling guns on kids making tree forts i don't they remember uh, they hearing stories about this 20 years ago i don't remember hearing stories like this 10 years ago one thing we do know is is that the internet has changed reporting dramatically because of bloggers. Um, they, they, but bloggers put such pressure on reporters that they now have to report stories that they wouldn't necessarily have reported in the past, for better or for worse. Uh, there's also the entertainment bloggers out there, and there's far more entertainment news out than I think that we the, the public needs. But they certainly get it, they want it, and they'll pay for it. I don't know. What do you think we do? What do we do about a government's gone run amok? 855-450-3733. You can call in, explain it to me, because the only thing I've been able to come up with is the Free State Project. You pick up and you move towards other people, you know, near other people who have the same concerns you do. And other than that, I don't know. Exposing it, taking video, that's certainly a good thing you can do where you are. I don't know. 855-450-3733 here on Free Talk Live. You can comment on our Facebook page, too. It's another way that we might see it. But I I, I just, it seems like it's out of control. Free Talk Live, 855-450, free. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. 
Meowbit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. Meowbit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of name coin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, Meowbit. Go to meowbit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, April 6th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.96 per ounce. Gold is worth $1,303 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $455. Reuters reports Edward Snowden and reporter Glenn Greenwald appeared together via video link from opposite ends of the earth on Saturday for what was believed to be the first time since Snowden sought asylum in Russia. A sympathetic crowd of nearly 1,000 people packed a downtown Chicago hotel ballroom at Amnesty International USA's annual human rights meeting and gave Greenwald, who dialed in from Brazil, a raucous welcome before Snowden was patched in 15 minutes later to a standing ovation. The pair cautioned that government monitoring of metadata is more intrusive than directly listening to phone calls or reading emails and stressed the importance of a free press willing to scrutinize government activity. Amnesty International is campaigning to end mass surveillance by the U.S. government and calling for congressional action to further rein in the collection of information about telephone calls and other communications. Last year, Snowden, who had been working at an NSA facility as an employee of Booz Allen Hamilton, leaked a raft of secret documents that revealed a vast U.S. government system for monitoring phone and internet data. The leaks deeply embarrassed the Obama administration, which in January banned U.S. eavesdropping on leaders of friendly countries and allies and began reining in the sweeping collection of Americans' phone data in a series of limited reforms triggered by Snowden's revelations. Snowden faces arrest if he steps foot on U.S. soil. President Obama said last month he plans to ask Congress to end the bulk collection of storage of phone records by the NSA, but to allow the government to access metadata when needed. When you purchase gold or silver from Amagi Metals using my affiliate link, gold.fppradio.com, you help fund FPP Radio News. That's gold.fppradio.com. Rollcall.com reports, Congressman James Moran said that despite what constituents outside of Washington, D.C. might think, members of Congress are underpaid. He plans to highlight this injustice by introducing an amendment to the legislative branch bill during its full committee markup and at floor consideration of the bill. Moran made the comments while the bill that funds members $174,000 per year salaries was being marked up in the legislative branch subcommittee. He told Roll Call, I think the American people should know that members of Congress are underpaid. I understand that it's widely felt that they underperform, but the fact is, this is the board of directors for the largest economic entity in the world. 
Moran claims that some members of Congress have taken to living out of their offices to save money, while others have small little apartment units that make it impossible for them to spend time with their families. Moran argues that since most state legislatures provide their members with a per diem allowance, the federal government should do the same. As for a dollar amount, Moran hasn't thought that through. He said it would probably be consistent with what the federal government provides other employees. FPP Radio News is brought to you by $6 Shirts. $6 Shirts is one of the top t-shirt companies on the web, and they want to be the t-shirt company for the Bitcoin marketplace. They actually give priority to all Bitcoin orders. Go look at their shirts. They're witty, hip, smart, and liberty-oriented. Shop $6 Shirts using my affiliate link, 6.fppradio.com, and help support FPP Radio News. That's 6.fppradio.com. Reuters reports Afghanistan's presidential election closed on Saturday amid relief that attacks by Taliban fighters were fewer than feared for a vote that will bring the first ever democratic transfer of power in a country plagued by conflict for decades. It will take six weeks for results to come in from across Afghanistan's rugged terrain and a final result to be declared in the race to succeed President Hamid Karzai. Karzai said, We prove to the world that this is a people-driven country. On behalf of the people, I thank the security forces, election commission, and people who exercised democracy and turned another page in the glorious history of Afghanistan. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. In order to more accurately portray the risks of smoking, the FDA has approved putting a picture of Trish on the cover of all cigarette packs. Clinical trials suggest that images of diseased organs, corpses, and deformed infants all prove less effective than a single photograph of Trish smiling. Smokers can expect to see the graphic campaign as early as next month, paired with a simple line of text that reads, Cigarettes Cause Trish. In science news, a new study finds that every style of parenting inevitably produces disturbed and miserable adults. Despite a great variance in parenting styles across populations, from overprotective to permissive, the end product is always the same, a profoundly flawed and joyless human being. One bright note of the study, adults can find temporary happiness when they're able to perpetuate the cycle of human misery by having children. In other news, the Pulitzer board adds a giant pumpkin category, and a local man's utter failure in life is a bit of a sore spot. For more news, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. Talk Live, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Kicking off the second hour of the Sunday night edition of Free Talk Live. It's uh, it's Mark. And Daryl. And actually, Kurt, a um, longtime uh, friend of the show, has uh, shown up in the studio, so I asked him if he'd sit in. Kurt? Thank you very much. I oh, appreciate you uh, say it again, Kurt. Thank you very much. I appreciate being here. Sorry, I uh, left the button pushed. I've been pushing the the different buttons all evening. So. If only my wife had one of those. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Just turn, <laughs> turn them on and turn it off. Yeah, she, hopefully she won't hear this. So, um, yeah, Kurt, you're just traveling through. You're looking at a move for the Free State Project and just kind of scouting out areas and stuff. Well, you know, it's 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 about convincing my wife. I'm on board and I'm ready to come up as soon as we can tie up the ends. You know, we did just buy a house, but you know, I'm I'm willing to to sell it and can come here if I if if my wife said it was okay to do that right now. Well, um, you know, it's all it takes is uh, for you know over time people get convinced that that might be the, what they would want to do. So, um, what do you what do you think she's holding off for? Well, she's the only child of septuagenarian parents, so I would never push her in that, yep. you know, against that. Because if, if she told me, you know, hey, the heck with them, let's go, I would look at her and say, I don't even know who you are. <laughs> right. That wouldn't make much sense. <laughs> it wouldn't, you know. So I'll never give her a hassle about wanting to stay to be able to be there for her parents. So, I mean, I, I, I can't. And I love her parents, too. I want her to be there for them. I want to be there for them as well. And then there's also her uh, her son, who's 23, who, I mean, I'd like to have come out with us as well. 
but if if he wanted to stay, that'd be fine as well. But tearing her away from him is going to be, it's going to at least take a four plane tickets a year to bring him to to visit at least. Family is the uh, the single biggest issue when it comes to picking up and moving for the Free State Project. I recommend bringing them with with one, but you can't always do that. It can be a it can be an issue. So what we've been talking about this evening seems to be the overarching idea of the show is sort of ludicrous things that happen. This story isn't specifically with police and bureaucrats. Yeah, ludicrous things that happen. The government uh, that's involved, and this is a strange one. I don't know if it, how ludicrous it is. Like, I, I suppose this one. I don't know. This one's a little a little odd. This is from Waldron, Indiana. Never heard of it, but uh, it's coming out of Indianapolis on the AP. FBI agents, I'm going to repeat that, Federal Bureau of Investigation agents have seized thousands of artifacts from Native Americans, Russia, China, and other nations from a private collection in rural central Indiana. FBI Special Agent Robert Jones says 91-year-old Donald Miller of Waldron collected the items over eight decades. He's 91 years old. Okay, no. I, I still don't see a problem. Yeah, well, it, it's interesting, right? I, I, think this is, I think this is an interesting issue, and I, want to talk, I, I do want to talk about it, because it has to do with sort of property, and it's complicated. So um, it's, he stored them in several buildings. He's got big Quonson hot things here for the storing of his stuff. Um, he's not he's not like a hoarder that's got his stuff all piled up as much as he's just a collector, I guess. And there's a bit of a difference. Stored him in several buildings about 35 miles southeast of Indianapolis. They've got a helicopter picture here showing it all. Jones says the cultural value of these artifacts is immeasurable. He says some items were acquired improperly. But others have been acquired legally or obtained before laws affecting them were on the books. Archaeologists are assisting agents in sorting and preserving the items. Jones says Miller is cooperating with the agents. Now, it it may take a little bit more than you know. Maybe it's maybe it's me reading these articles over the years. But what do you think the they're gonna do is take more of this stuff than this old uh, from this old guy than they should. They're going to take all of the stuff from the old guy, and they shouldn't take any of it. Well, I don't know about any of it, and I kind of wonder about this. So let's, uh, you know, you pick uh, Native American, Russian, or China. You pick. Uh, Native American. Okay, great. So you are a member of the Wixaksakchi tribe. You don't have much history. Some archaeologist 70 years ago. And by archaeologist, I mean treasure hunter, <laughs> digs up something, maybe chips off a, uh, a, a a carving off of a wall, sells it to this guy. Because this is back in the day before they had laws like this. And I don't know. Is that theft? Isn't it? Who owns it? Well, if it's on Indian land, oftentimes this land is almost, it's so uncared for, it's almost public land, Right. Does right. It so, does it need to be under somebody's direct control in order to not be theft? I wonder about that. If okay, let, but, let's. But is centuries-old graffiti? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. All right. So let, let's put it this way, Mark. You have a decent amount of land. I do. If an archaeologist or a treasure hunter comes and says, "Mark, I would like to dig around in your land and see if I can find some stuff." Yep. And. Well, would you agree? I would say. Um, I, I'm or, very or would you in- say, let, let's let come up with some kind of uh, contract? Yeah, yeah, I would say that I have this very interesting mound over here. I don't know why it's there. It's very suspicious to me, and I want you to look at this mound first. Okay. I think this mound may contain seed corn. Now, if you're looking for things... You don't want to find gold. You don't want to find, uh, you know, weapons. You want to find seed corn um, here in the United States because this is the most valuable archaeological find you can you can find. Okay, fine, Mark. I'll they don't dig- know how corn came about. They just don't know. I, I I'll <laughs> dig through the mound that you have, yep. and I'll give you twenty five percent of the value of whatever I find. Thirty five. 30. <laughs> 33. All right. All right. Dill, handshake. We write something up. Yep. I start digging around. Come to find out that, you know, some chief 
from 500 years ago buried something on what is now your land. Does that rightfully belong to the The Mohegan tribe? Abenaki. Okay, the Abenaki tribe. Or does it rightfully belong to Mark Edge, who is the current property owner of that piece of land? Wouldn't it be considered? Wouldn't it be considered abandoned property? I mean, it's been lying there for. That's the point I'm getting at. Is you know, like, how can you rightfully say this belongs to this entire civilization when it has obviously been abandoned? It's it's really complicated. Um, and, and abandoned, what's that mean? If somebody was killed, does it belong to their rightful heirs? If their rightful heirs didn't know about it? I mean, it just gets into this really sort of weird nether world. And I don't know. I mean, I don't know the answers. Um, but I, I tend to think that this guy is, you know, he's a collector. He's been collecting this stuff over the course of a lifetime. And I feel like he's probably going to get taken advantage of. Oh, no. No, you can't have this thing. He's going to get robbed is what he's going to yeah, get. Yeah, he's going to get robbed. And, well, you can't have this thing. This has to go back to its original folks. Oh, I don't care how much you paid for it. That doesn't matter. And, you know, this is the thing is, is I suppose that the most that should be done here is that these, you know, the particular tribes or I don't know who we're talking about. Russia and China is also mentioned. The particular whatevers should be advised. Hey, I've got this thing. I've got that thing. Everything's for sale. I'm sure Mr. Miller could be talked out of a certain amount of these things if they were purchased. Because I do think you'd have to purchase them back. Okay. Let, let's go back 24 years, roughly. All right. Right after the Berlin Wall yep. came down. Okay. You could buy chunks, chunks of, of rock, like buy a piece of the Berlin Wall, yep. and you know you, you would get something <laughs> in the mail, and it would say, you know, like come with a certificate of authenticity. This is part of the Berlin Wall. This would this isn't such just something we bashed off of a cinder block. This is part of the Berlin Wall. So in let's say another hundred years, uh-huh. after all of the people that rightfully made those purchases are dead. Uh, assuming that you know they they have all passed away 100 years seems to be a safe amount of time for that to happen would the german government then be able to seize all of the pieces of the berlin wall claiming these are artifacts of german history you did not have the you, you never purchased this you have stolen it from the people of germany I wouldn't doubt that something like that could happen. But it's the East German government that built it. 855. And they're no longer around. What do you think? 855 450 free. These are complicated questions. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I am, is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty your amp will directly change more lives by getting free talk live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air find out about giving to our google adwords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com that's amp.freetalklive.com making the right decisions is a challenge to investors are we going to see economic growth slide into a recession or at worst depression hi ted anderson from midas resources we all know when a company acts irresponsibly divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent when the market becomes volatile u.s treasuries are a safe haven but what do you do when the u.s government overextends itself and spends beyond its means many investors are turning toward gold as a common sense alternative to traditional paper investments midas resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. 
A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. Do you think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DownsizeDC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got into the bill. One congressman questioned said, I didn't write it, I didn't approve it, I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DownsizeDC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizeDC.org. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Lil Drums. Every bit as fun as a full-size Nestle drumstick cone and definitely cuter. Visit us at drumstick.com. Vacations are all about family time, but you don't have to leave home to have fun. Take one weekend a month and devote it to family activities. Pull out the board games and puzzles, serve up some treats, or have a picnic. Even without leaving home, you'll feel like you've really had some time away. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855. 855- Four fifty three seven three three. It's Mark with you and Kurt and Daryl. Eight fifty five four fifty free. That's what three seven three three spells out on on the telephone. And if you're looking for gold and silver, look no further than gold.freetalklive.com. We have there many coins and pieces that you uh, can peruse through. If you're looking to say invest in gold as a investment. You know, you think it's going to go up in the near future. I do think silver is poised to move upward. That's my opinion. Take it for what it's worth. Others agree with me. Some, I'm sure, disagree. But um, I like to have it around as a hedge against inflation. Uh, Perhaps uh, I I use it as a barter currency. I pay people in silver if that's what they want to do. I also uh, give them the option of bitcoins, too. Many people taking that option these days. But I like to have it as, uh, as a possibility. Now, I use what they call uh, a coin silver or junk silver. I use dimes. Uh, I love mercury dimes because they're obviously worth more than an Eisenhower dime. Because if you just get the old Eisenhower dime, it looks like an old Eisenhower dime. Um, you know, it's ten worth 10 cents. A mercury dime, clearly not worth 10 cents. So if you get an old mercury dime, it's not particularly worth anything besides the silver in it. It's it's a very usable barter size currency. I mean, you know, the amount of each dime, small, you don't have to make too much change. So there you go, gold.freetalklive.com, and Free Talk Live gets a little credit for it. We're talking about this strange story out of Indiana, and it's a it's an older gentleman who has been collecting artifacts for years, and he stores them in these you know shed, big big shed things that he's got in order to keep them safe. And the FBI has uh, taken an interest in his collection. I've got a question real quick. If instead of just storing these things in his home or in warehouses that I, I'm presuming he either owned or had the usage usage rights to, what would have been the difference from a legal perspective? And I, I don't know if either one of you guys know this, but it's certainly something to sort of you know stimulate conversation. From a legal perspective, would it have been different had he opened his home up for a museum? 
and said, come tour and see my artifacts. Well, it's getting to be very important these days how a museum acquires stuff. There's a lot of stuff out there in museums. Now, I think they're going after this guy because he's an individual as opposed to a museum. It's a lot easier. The museum has this whole cultural momentum behind it. So if your museum has something that it acquired many years ago, I remember I, I went to museums back in the 70s. I'm sure that the uh, the checks and balances put in place at, you know, at that time were a lot looser than they are today. But, I mean, you know, I, I don't. Once it's there, what do you do? So you, we had talked about in the break, what if somebody went and robbed uh, you know, one of the pyramids of Giza in the 20s? What well, about- we know for a fact that yeah. people went in there and they took stuff with them and we because know- some of the stuff wound up in the museums of London. Right, and we know some of that stuff has been returned to the people of Egypt, meaning the Egyptian government. Um, <laughs> you know, the people of Egypt see nothing of this. And and I don't know, do the people of Egypt own the pyramids of Giza? They were, I mean, you know, they're sort of, uh, as, as I understand, the pharaohs were actually, some recent information, maybe I've got this wrong, but this is what I remember reading on the internet, you know, months ago, was that they weren't even Egyptian. They were like white people that came from uh, the Mediterranean, across the, the Mediterranean. So... You know, do, well, you know what Abraham Lincoln once said, don't believe everything you read on the Internet. Indeed, yeah. Abraham's like that. He's, he's a wise man, and he can't tell a lie because uh, he'll cut down a cherry tree. The uh, Yeah, so, I mean, you know, I don't know. Do the pyramids belong to the people of Egypt? What hap- I mean, obviously somebody stole this stuff. Right, right. And fr- from a different perspective, like, while I don't agree that governments can own things— it's not the same Egyptian government that exists now that existed in the 20s and yeah. the government that existed in the 1920s was by no stretch of the imagination the same government that existed when the pyramids were born or built who knows when. Right, and there's sort of two good reasons why you would want that property back in Egypt, right? One, the Egyptian government wants the tourism revenue from all of these items that come through. They get they get revenue. The Museum of London wants tourism revenue from this British guy went there that one time and brought this back with him. Yeah, but this rotting stick um, is from Egypt, not the rotting stick from London. The London Museum has the right to the rotting sticks in London. So, I mean, you know, that's what the argument's going to be there. And secondarily, you would want I think the the best excuse reason you would want that stuff all in one place is, you know, when Egyptologists get together to study Egypt, you would want the Egypty stuff all in one Egypty place so that they can study all their Egypty things and come up with their Egypty conclusions, right? True, true. I mean, that kind of makes some sense. We still live in a world where time and space matter. I don't know how long it's going to matter for the internet where you're going to be able to Pick up things and yeah, technology allows you to to view things intricately from miles away, but it, the world away. It's not the a, same. A, a solar system away. Maybe. People are looking at Mars and finding things. <laughs> it, it, well, that that's within the same solar system, not right. well, across uh, to a different one. It, within the solar system, but it, it's not the same. Right looking away. at pictures of Da Vinci's notebooks online. And actually walking into a museum and being six inches away from Da Vinci's notebook. Yeah, I agree. And I think that the best excuse for collecting all of the, you know, Da Vinci stuff in one Da Vinci place, call that place Rome, um, is because you, you know, the Da Vinci. It's actually in Venice. Is it? Okay, fine. Wherever. Um, You don't want to keep it in Venice. It'll get moldy. It's all that water around. The, uh, you know. But several years ago when that museum that houses all of Da Vinci's stuff was being renovated. Innovated, the museum leased out a lot of the materials yeah. to several traveling exhibits. And I love that. I and love I went to, to two stuff. of them and paid $25 to go to each one to see twice as much Da Vinci stuff as if I would have only gone to one of them. There you go. And this is the thing that uh, I would – the ar- thing I would argue is, is that if you – if you collect all the Egypty stuff or Da Vinci stuff or whatever stuff in one place, then you have to travel to that place to see it. Because, yes, it matters whether the scholars can see these things. They're going to come up with the better conclusions than we are. But the public needs – there needs to be momentum behind this stuff. The public needs to care. And there's some things they care about and some they don't. And so the things that they care about are the things they've experienced, they've touched, they've been near, they've gelled with in some way. 
I care about the Egypty stuff because I stood in line as an eight year old at the Field Museum in uh, Chicago to see, to walk through and walk past the Tutankhamun exhibit. And it was a big deal to me. And I, you know, I mean, because I, I was emotionally invested. That was a huge line I stood in. <laughs> and so I had, I, I, I can't tell you the name of too many emperors or uh, pharaohs of Egypt besides Tutankhamun. And it's because I stood in the line. It's because Ramses. Yeah, Ramses that comes to mind. Um, and Ramses the second. Yeah, uh, Tut, Tuck. I have no idea. I got nothing else. That, that's. Tutankhamen yeah, is I King no Tut. I got nothing else. See, that's the thing. And you want people to have these experiences. And I don't know what's stolen and what's not. It kind of feels like once something's a couple of decades gone, it's just gone. 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. You can give us a call and tell us what you think. 855-450-3733. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV Did you know there's a way that could save you thousands on your credit card debt without going to a credit counseling organization or to a debt consolidation company? Did you know this same strategy could help you completely settle all of your debt fast? To unlock this vital information for free and to discover how much you could save, call now, 1-800-928-5394. At FDR, we're not going to explain this strategy on the radio. What we can tell you is we've already helped thousands of Americans resolve over $2 billion in credit card and other unsecured debt. Why not add your debt to that? Again, to unlock this vital information to settling your debt as fast as possible, call 1-800-928-5394. If you're struggling with debt, this may be the answer you've been looking for. Call now. The bigger your debt, the more you need this vital free information. To find out how much money you could save, call 1-800-928-5394. Find out for free at 1-800-928-5394. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the Realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. 
Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-453. That's uh, spelling out the word free. The numbers are 3733, so that's 855-450-3733, or you can call us on Skype. LRN.FM is our username there. If you haven't already sent us a user request on LRN. Uh, excuse me, on Skype at LRN.FM, just go ahead and send it. We'll t- you know, I can improve it right here during the show. You can give us a call, and the audio sounds great on Skype. It's Mike, Mark here with you. Not Mike. What am I doing? Who Mike? is Mike? I, I don't know. Uh, I'll be Mike. Mark here? I think maybe I combined those two words. I don't know. Mark here. And Kurt. And Daryl. 855. No mic. 50 free. No mics in the studio. We've got three mics in the studio. So. We're, we're, we're talking into them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, blockchain.info. It is a great online wallet that you can use to store your Bitcoins. It is, uh, wh- what I like about it, there's several features. One, Blockchain doesn't possess your Bitcoins. It's not like a bank. They don't hold your Bitcoins for you. They give you access to an encryption program that works with your browser that encrypts your uh, Bitcoins so they never have possession of your Bitcoins. They also make it so that the, you know they have interactivity through the your smartphone, through your laptop, your desktop, your tablet, whatever you want to use. They make it easy for you to access your Bitcoins. So if you want to access your Bitcoins on the run and pay for things in real life, blockchain makes that incredibly easy. The first one I had, a Bitcoin spinner, now it may be better, it's just the, the iteration I had a couple of years ago, I couldn't access those Bitcoins anywhere but on the phone. So if I, for whatever reason, drop my phone in uh, the toilet, it could it's gone. Those Bitcoins are gone. Gone. Not the so with blockchain.info. Also, they have tools there to allow you to easily send and receive your Bitcoins anonymously. There's an incredible amount of tools at blockchain.info. It's basically the only site you need to figure out the Bitcoin thing. Block chain.info so we've had a kind of a a list of sort of strange stories here and i thought we'd go a little more serious this one's a bit odd judge dismisses dismisses lawsuit over drone killings of americans says it's a matter for congress so you may remember this but um uh, this uh, this guy alwaki Anwar al Alwaki yep. and his 16-year-old son. Uh, I thought he was like 14. Anyway. 16 at the time that he was killed by a drone. Okay. Um, were killed in Yemen. and In separate attacks. In separate attacks. Yeah, that's true. And the, the son was not a target, uh, supposedly. That's what we're told. But interesting. He's, he's just as dead. The U.S. federal, it's difficult to know what happens out in the, the deserts of uh, Yemen, but we know that there have been, the, the Yemenis are really sick and tired of this whole droning thing. I can yes. tell you that. And you'd be tired of it if it was happening in your state, too. So you could just dismiss this all you want, but you know as well as I do, when they drop a Hellfire missile, they're not always hitting the right people. U.S. federal judge has dismissed a lawsuit filed against the government by the families of three American citizens killed by drones in Yemen. American citizens. Saying senior officials cannot be held personally responsible for money damages for the act of conducting war. How can you conduct a war when there's no war that's been enacted? The United States hasn't declared war on anyone since 1942. And further, even if you go by the official hostilities... That is technically only in Afghanistan. The hostilities in Iraq ended a couple of years ago. Mission accomplished. Well, that was 10 years ago. (laughs) But there, there has never been any kind of congressional authorization to use force in Yemen. Yeah, well, I think what's going on in Yemen... And this is a nasty little trick that the, uh, the the U.S. government and their their intelligence agencies will will employ. I think what's going on is is they've leased these drones 
to the Yemeni's government, although the Yemeni's government, the dictator there that they've been propping up for the last four decades or whatever, he doesn't actually have any control over them. So they're leasing drones to him over which they have control over his drones. Does that make sense? Yes. He'll never control the drones he leases. Sounds like a paperwork thing. It's a paperwork thing. <laughs> anyway, the families of the three, including Anwar al Awaki here, Awaki, a New Mexico-born militant Muslim cleric who had joined Al Qaeda's Yemen affiliate, as well as his uh, teenage son, sued over their 2011 deaths as U.S. drone strikes, arguing that the killings were illegal. Judge Rosemary. Uh, Collier of the U.S. District Court in Washington threw out the case, which named as uh, which had named as defendants the former Defense Secretary and CIA Chief uh, Leon Panetta, the former Senior Military Commander and CIA Chief uh, Petraeus. The question present, uh, presented is whether federal officials could be held personally liable for their roles in drone strikes abroad that kill and target U.S. citizens. And I, you really, I don't, I mean, doesn't it seem, doesn't it seem obvious that nobody in the government can be held held responsible for anything? Isn't that what working in the government means? It means you never have to say you're sorry. You never have to say you're sorry. You're never responsible for anything. You do all kinds of dumb crap that results in all kinds of dumb crap, and you never have to take responsibility for it. Now, I don't know what the right answer was here with dealing with our, uh, uh, Anwar al I I'm not going to claim to know that, but I am going to claim that we have one dispute resolution organization here in the United States that is available to people as that final arbitration organization, and that's the federal court system. When you can't bring your dispute to the federal court system, where do you bring it? The judge says this is an issue for Congress. Well, you're gonna, you can't bring a case to Congress. Right. The First Amendment, uh, the right to, to uh, for redress of grievances... Petition the government for a redress of grievance. The courts have thrown out, you have the right to petition, but they have no obligation to provide you an answer. Right. I mean, I just don't know what you're supposed to do here. Go to the International Court of Criminal Justice. That court, the World Court or whatever it is, it's only available to nations. Only national governments can go there. Okay, so declare yourself an independent nation and then file the suit. Well, then you can't bring anything in federal court because you don't have standing. No, to insane. the ICC. Take it to They're the ICC. They're not going to do anything unless the UN recognizes you. I know. They wouldn't do anything anyway because it's against America, right? Anybody right. who stands against America stands to have bombs rain down upon them. Right. What if the federal, the, the, the international court, whatever this is, um, says that uh, the U.S. is wrong? You're wrong. You're all war criminals. What's going to happen? As I understand, uh, it was like Nigeria or something that declared George Bush a war criminal. I heard, I, I think this was the case. And that means since they're a member of Interpol, that supposedly Interpol has to arrest George Bush when he's abroad. Now, I haven't heard a story of him leaving Texas. I don't keep a close eye on George Herbert Walker Bush. Is that no no? That's not his name. Which one? That, that that's the father. That's the father. He's probably I, a war criminal too. I don't know what any of these. I, I don't care about these people or what they do. But it's pretty Malaysia. It, it was in Malaysia, the Kuala Lumpur uh, War Crimes Tribunal. Okay. Now, as I understood, whatever the nation was was a member of Interpol. So therefore, Interpol was supposed to be obligated. Not that I believed for one moment that they would be. I know Brattleboro, Vermont, actually declared them war criminals and that if they stepped foot in Brattleboro, they had to be arrested. I don't imagine George Bush feels too bad about not happen, not, not, not stopping by the Brattleborian dim sum place. Yeah. Um, it's I, really good. Th there, there I was, imagine he'd be able to stand right in the center of town and not have anything happen to him. Brattleboro is a strange place. Yes. Um, I, I'm not entirely d uh, prepared to say what you're saying is so. I, I think somebody might try to, d to declare a, a citizen's arrest, um, but the Secret Service agents would probably shoot them dead. There have been people that have tried to do citizen's arrest against Dick Cheney. Yeah. <laughs> it's that, never how, worked. How'd that go? Yeah. But they've tried. <laughs> well, Dick will shoot you in the face over that. And, and there, <laughs> They'll take you hunting anyway. <laughs> there, there was a taco chain in, I think it was Buffalo, New York that issued an official statement that Vladimir Putin is not welcome in their restaurants until he apologizes over annexing Crimea. There you go. Uh, Putin and Crimea and 
Dick shooting people in the face. You can only hear that on Free Talk Live. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. What do you think? Are these people ever going to be held responsible? I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com I will never forget the day my son Jeremy told me he hated me and slammed the door in my face. I'm behavioral therapist Janet Lehman. Behavior problems can turn the child you love and your life into a nightmare. That's why my husband James and I created the Total Transformation, the step-by-step program that shows you how to fix the worst behavior problems and get your child to respect and listen to you again. No matter what the behavior, defiance, backtalk, angry outbursts, disrespect, we can help you stop it. Now you can get the total transformation for free. All you need to do is get the program and let us know how it works for you. You can keep it forever for free. Limited number of free programs available. Call now. 1-888-912-1595. 1-888-912-1595. That's 1-888-912-1595. 1-888-912-1595. 9121595 On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs, you guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp, is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments around the world killing innocent people? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin is money that cannot be inflated or controlled by any state. By continuing to use their money, you're perpetuating the killing. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available to you now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at weusecoins.com. It's weusecoins.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, 855-453. That's 
450-3733. You can call in, talk about whatever is on your mind on the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live with Mark. And Kurt. And Daryl. Kurt sitting in for a couple of hours with us, passing through, checking out the Free State. Really appreciate you coming in, Kurt. My pleasure. So a wonderful time here. Yep. 855-450-FREE. You can call in and participate with us, too. We're talking about this situation where a federal judge has dismissed a court case by American citizens about the U.S. government assassinating U.S. citizens. And it's kind of interesting what the judge has to say here. We'll get to it in a moment. But first, we're going to go to to Nathan, I think calling in from Texas, if I remember correctly. Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Evening, Mark. Evening, Kurt. Good evening. And Daryl. Nathan. Hello. What, what, what do you want to talk about? Oh, sorry. I thought I had a bad connection there. Well, I wanted to talk about Game of Thrones, where politicians also don't be aren't held accountable for their actions. You know, I haven't. Don't give any spoilers about what happens tonight. Spoiler alert! Um, I well, I, I don't I can, know anything about Game of Thrones other than um, you know, season four exists. kicks off tonight. Okay. Well, and I have a huge crush on Daenerys Stormborn. Is that the a, she's actually dragons. who I wanted to talk about, and I, I won't give uh, any major spoilers. Uh, and I, and I won't spoil babies. tonight's episode. Is that all right? Go Darryl? right ahead. All as right. long well, as it's not about season four, we're good. Uh, Well, I'm not sure because it's kind of... She's already done some of what I'm going to talk about, which is... uh, You remember how she sacked that uh, slave city and uh, has declared herself the mother of freedom or whatever? Yes. Well, it's interesting because in the past on Free Talk Live, Mark has argued for slavery, um, you know, or at least... Uh, cited arguments where you could say, well, you know, there's a lot of benefits to slavery, like, you know, don't, you don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to provide your own, uh, you know, housing and health care and so on. Well, no, no, and, no, no, no. Uh, well, let's, uh, what I've talked about, <laughs> talk about, geez, I can't even get my friends here to represent my stuff correctly. I'm saying as a slave owner that you have overhead in the caring for slaves. So there's cost. You don't get to keep 100% of a slave's labor because you have to give them medical care and food and clothing and things like that. Well, you don't have to, but if you want them to live long enough to be productive and make money to cover the cost of what you paid for them, then you probably should provide them with health care and food and clothing. Well, thank you for that legalized parsing of reality, Daryl. In, in, <laughs> in one in one sentence, a dead slave makes no, no gets no cotton, right? It, right. N- none of that stuff happens. I could buy a horse tomorrow, then refuse to feed it, um, as uh, you know, until it starves to death. Assuming that somebody doesn't report me, teach to the your SPCA. horse not to eat. Well, here, I just teach him that. Uh, you know, and then I would get 100% of its labor, but it would only last for a few more days. Right. So, well, true. Makes sense. So, what, so but uh, one of the plots that's upcoming is going to address this matter, though, of slavery and what happens when you free the slaves? Do they kind of automatically uh, start, you know, performing voluntary transactions and enriching the economic life of the, their communities or is it really is it or are there a lot of bad spots and it is a is it a drawn out process oh it's complicated i'm yeah. sure in american history it, you know it actually was it, just after slavery ended it, it was a more dangerous time for for african americans because you know you were no longer a five thousand dollar piece of property to protect yeah you were hated and not worth anything. Um, and also, many times you'd had slaves going back to work for the same places that they worked before. Or never wanted, right, to, leave as, never wanted to leave the plantations as slaves at all. Oftentimes, Jefferson bemoaned what would happen to the slaves. Of course, the way he treated his weren't uh, wasn't great at the end of his life because he uh, spent so much time in the government. He was greatly in debt and basically auctioned off his slaves uh, from his uh, plantation, too. George Washington freed his after he died. <laughs> um, so, I mean, you had that, this- that seemed to be somewhat common, though, to have it in the will of upon my death, the slave shall be free. Wasn't George Washington the one who fought to keep his slaves uh, on, for a few more years, or was that uh, was that that, that uh, was Lincoln? Grant? That was Grant. Be- oh, okay. Before the Civil War, Robert E. Lee freed his slaves. Grant maintained ownership of his slaves. Huh. Yeah. Well, uh, these Washington. Inter- uh, the, by, by the way, uh, uh, Lincoln never pre- never freed a single person. Uh, that's true. So it's inter- these these and other interesting issues will be addressed in the upcoming season of Game of Thrones. And uh, 
I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to add to that, Daryl. It sounds like you're a fan of the show as well. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the show, and I watched the first three seasons in seven days. That's uh, uh that, that's maybe too much. Hours maybe too of much. programming. You guys can chat about the Game of Thrones. Uh, that was a full time on, job on Facebook. Thanks for the call, Nathan. <laughs> um, I do think that the the issue of slavery is very interesting. There was a uh, uh, there's a story that I saw of a uh, slave a slave owner who slave escaped to Canada. Then when he uh, after the Civil War was over, I guess he wrote to the slave to try to get him to come back and work for him. Um, and I'm not exactly sure of the timeline here, but the slave wrote him back and said, you beat my wife in front of me and I couldn't do anything about it. You think I want to come back and work for you? And these p- people, this was the way things went. People, have, I mean, even after that, people beat their employees. It's not that uncommon. I mean, it was relatively common to beat people. And it, it's in the military, it's only recently gone away. They shot a man for uh, for, for um, trying to, to flee the battlefield in World War II. It's only 60 years ago. I can't remember what his name was, but it was uh, made into a movie. And interesting stuff, I think. I think um, I think the slavery issue is interesting because here's what I want to know. If I own me, if I am free, and perhaps I've messed up in life and I want to get a loan to start off a new business, can I promise my labor for five years if I don't pay the loan? Like you, you Daryl, you give me $50,000. I say, look, you give me the $50,000, I'll pay you back in two years. If I don't, I'll work for you to pay off the rest of the loan and I'll work the whatever hours I'll live wherever you want. I'll uh, live whatever conditions you want. I mean, basically I'll be your slave for whatever period of time it takes to work it off. That sounds like indentured servitude. Yeah, That's not slavery. It's pretty close. It's not slavery. And it's also not legal in the United States anymore. Right. It's not convicted of a crime. Unless you're convicted of a crime. I I mean, you know, there's different... Slavery has different flavors. Now, chattel slavery in the South is one thing where your children are slaves because you're a slave and that kind of thing. But there's other... You know, Caesar was a slave. Bought his own freedom. And so serfs were slaves because they were indentured to the land. So there's interesting is it a history of what's what what is a slave? It's not perhaps capitalist slave, um, you know, but it's still it's slavery. I've had people actually, you know, at work say this is slavery. And I'm like, nobody's going to shoot you if you leave. Right. You can leave. Yeah. Anytime you want. <laughs> and but there are jobs where you I, you know, if, if if I was free, would I be able to sell myself into a situation where I wouldn't be allowed to leave? And I think it's an interesting question. Let's go to Francine in New Jersey. Francine, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Hi, and I agree with you. Um, what I believe is that it's it's not slavery. It's it's uh, it's freedom. What's slavery and what's freedom? Well, uh, we had uh, we we had uh, the slavery, and then what? When we have to go out, leave what we have to do and go on about our lives, um, there's a difference between freedom uh, when we leave there and then what what we are all about now with slavery and the way it used to be. I'm not um, entirely w- sure what you're saying, but okay, go ahead. Well, what I'm calling about is uh, the, the, the uh, Free Ross campaign yes. that was just said. Russ, what uh, is that all about? Okay, so Ross Ulbricht is uh, the guy that was supposedly is accused by the United States government as being the guy who is the Dread Pirate Roberts. Now, okay. um, one of the things the, the federal government uh, did when they arrested him was they claimed that he was, uh, besides, he was running the... Um, Silk Road. The Silk Road, which was an Turn online... Uh, Off. What's that? Go yeah. ahead. I'm, I'm listening. Okay. Yeah, it was an online place where people can buy and sell things. Many of those things were illegal, like drugs. Not okay. all of them. Okay. <laughs> and, it's very interesting. Yeah, and uh, one of the things that they accused him of doing was a murder-for-hire campaign. Now, okay. I wouldn't support anybody who tried, to, who, you know, paid to murder somebody. Interestingly, the United States government has only charged him with the uh, with the stuff about the website. And mm-hmm. not about the murder for hire. I feel the United States government has been extraordinarily disingenuous in the Ross Ulbricht situation, and I really want to mm-hmm. know the truth. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Any other questions? Wow. 
That's pretty interesting. Thank you very much for the call, um, Francine. I appreciate thank it. You. Thanks. All right. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Call in with uh, whatever's on your mind. Free Talk Live. People are waking up. People are saying no to GMO, gluten, toxins, and sugars. The masses are moving to holistic, natural, and organic foods and supplements. Life Change Tea is a non-GMO, gluten-free product that helps your body overcome sickness and obesity. You need to order to experience the change. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Or call us at 928-308-0408. Again, 928-308-0408. You need to order to experience your health change. GetTheTea.com. Here's something you don't hear on the radio every day. Someone who can't see. I am totally blind, and I go through periods where I'm unable to sleep at night and feel like I'm constantly running but can never quite catch up. But this isn't a sleep problem. It's something called non-24. Learn about the link between total blindness and your symptoms. Visit learnmorenon24.com or call 855-856-2424. Sponsored by Vanda Pharmaceuticals. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 2nd, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,290, silver opened at $19.97, and Bitcoin is trading at $482.10. Support for Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more at GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Support also comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner. One terahash and only 1,000 watts. Order yours online today at bitmaintech.com. And support comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication along with posters and promotions materials. Online at affordablesound.com or call them 512-459-5253. In the news, since the IRS recently ruled that Bitcoin is property and not currency, how can it be used in the crime of money laundering? That's the question being asked by the lawyer for alleged Silk Road operator Ross Ulbricht. Forbes reports that attorney Ross Dradel has filed a motion arguing that all charges against Ulbricht, including money laundering and conspiracy to traffic in narcotics, be dismissed. More controversy in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where eyewitnesses are questioning the shooting of a fugitive by deputy U.S. Marshals. KRQE is reporting that witnesses claim that Marshals, when they encountered the wanted man sitting in a car, gave their commands to surrender, and immediately opened fire. Eyewitnesses say the fugitive was not armed, sitting with his hands on the steering wheel. He was transported for hospitalized treatment. The outrage follows last Sunday's massive protest in Albuquerque, held to voice opposition to last month's fatal police shooting of homeless resident James Boyd. In an effort to combat food shortages and hoarding, the Venezuelan government has introduced a new identification card system for purchasing food. President Nicolas Maduro stated that the new measures will reduce black market sales of food products. The new measures include fingerprint scanning, taking down cell phone numbers of customers, and banning miners from purchasing food. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Sovereign BTC, media, marketing, and consulting for the Bitcoin ecosystem. Operated by Liberty Beat founder John Bush. Online, SovereignBTC.com. 
Support comes from the Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central, CoreyMooreShow.com. And support for Liberty Beat comes from Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Inc. Precious metals at reasonable rates since 1977. Online at rrbi.co. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 2nd, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. A controversial classified Senate report on torture concludes that waterboarding and other torture methods did not provide key intelligence in the search for Osama bin Laden. According to the Associated Press and the Washington Post, U.S. officials who have seen the report state that intelligence of significance was not gained through torture, and in some cases, the CIA lied about the effectiveness of information gathered using enhanced interrogation methods. On Sunday afternoon, between 100,000 to 500,000 Taiwanese citizens took to the streets of Taipei to protest a possible international agreement with China that they believe will hurt the sovereignty of their nation. The so-called Sunflower Movement has been occupying Taiwan's legislature for two weeks. At one point, nearly 20,000 protesters held the presidential office building. Concerned citizens believe the Cross-Strait Trade and Services Agreement will give China more influence over Taiwanese matters. NATO announced a suspension of all practical civilian and military cooperation with Russia on Tuesday, condemning the country's illegal intervention in Ukraine as Moscow turned the financial screws on Kiev by hiking the cost of gas. Al Jazeera reports that NATO foreign ministers have issued a strongly worded report that says the Russian takeover of Crimea represented a violation of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks. CHL courses, self-defense training, and firearm sales. Give them a call, 512-731-3585, or online at centraltexasgunworks.com. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwest Burritos with homemade tortillas, online at cabobobs.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 2nd, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Remember, spread liberty with a smile. From that romantic summer evening in 1924 when Pol Pot was conceived to the first time someone figured out how to eat a pineapple without ripping their mouth to shreds. This week in history, 1692, five citizens were executed after being convicted during the Salem witch trials. All while dozens of witches, warlocks, and sorcerers stood by and watched the wrongly accused take the rap for them, while the perfectly normal humans charged with witchcraft were publicly hung and dragged to their unmarked graves, the numerous Salem citizens that did spend their evenings casting spells and awakening the dead merely lowered their heads as their friends and neighbors were burned at the stake. Historical records have indicated that as many as 35% of the people in Salem were actually witches and warlocks. In fact, the executioner himself was a well-known necromancer who who, after hanging the wrongly accused witches, reanimated their dead bodies and apologized before casting them into the eternal fires of hell. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. It always says, I think it sounds like when I say free, 855-450-free, I think it sounds like I'm saying three. It, it does. Worries, it worries me. Yeah. And earlier when you were saying what the numbers spell out, I chuckled because I've got one of these cell phones that has the full keyboard. Yeah. So none of the numbers correspond to a letter. So if I tried spelling free, then it would not spell whatever it's supposed to. It's a horrible d- dilemma to have a telephone number that spells out the word free when your show is called Free Talk Live and not be able to use it because the word free sounds like the word three. So it's a difficult situation. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. It's anyway, live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. And Kurt. And Daryl. 855-453-733. The show is about your calls. Let's go right back to them. Let's talk to uh, Ken calling from Illinois. Ken, you're on Free Talk Live. What is on your mind, sir? Hey, guys. I think it's kind of ironic that you uh, that you were mentioning the, the the correlation between free and three, because for the first three days that I was listening to you guys, 
I would try to call in dialing 855-453. Yeah, it's... <laughs> and I'm like, what the heck? This just doesn't but work. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, the reason I was calling in was um, I wanted to add something to Nathan's call. He mentioned, um, you guys were talking about slavery, and somebody said something to the effect of when slavery was ended. And slavery hasn't been ended in this country. Physical slavery has been ended, but we are all still slaves. We are, though the whole term, the, the idea of a wage slave is not just some little idea that people thought of that would be cute. It's a fact and it's the truth. People that are not working on an agorist level are still slaves to the federal government because if we don't give them money, they will come to our houses and kill us. But that's not, that's not a wage slave. A wage slave, to me, insinuates that you are a slave to your employer. Right. You have to, you have to work in order to live. That's the human condition. And, and most people in the United States are that one or two paycheck away from being homeless. So there's that's a, bad money management. That, <laughs> well, it, to some extent, yes, it's bad money management. And to another extent, it sort of is indicative of the system that has been created to where taxes yeah. are incredibly high, your rent keeps going up, your utilities keep going up. Even if you cut the amount of electricity that you use, the rate that the electric company charges keeps going up. It does. And then the last step in the inflationary process is then the wage get raised. And, so and, let, let Ken explain what he means by uh, sort of agorism. We have to define that. And what uh, you're talking about well, as far as slavery goes. I believe agorism is simply you know, defined by refusing to play with the current system that we have. I mean, not paying taxes, not registering your business with those that call themselves the government and wield guns. Um, and, you know, to be honest, we don't have a nation. This isn't a country. It is a tax farm. Nothing more, nothing less. Agreed. Uh, I would contend are- that one could never be fully an agorist. If that person interacts with other humans at all. Why do you think so? Well, there are taxes added to your utility bill. Now, I I guess that, you know, you could have wind and solar to where you're completely off the grid. But if you interact with another person, then they paid fuel taxes. Some of that goes to the state. Some goes to the feds so that there are taxes being paid at various levels if you purchase anything for use in your agorist venture and you purchase that from another person there are taxes at some level that are being paid so if the point is to get away from all forms of taxation then you cannot interact with another human and be fully an agorist i suppose i could see your point with that but i mean I guess it all comes down to what level of agorism you want to try and uh, devote yourself to. Yeah, I but, see that. Uh, I see why uh, you know people trying to avoid uh, paying uh, taxes. I mean, there's uh, the Quakers, uh, of which I am one, have been trying uh, refuse to pay war taxes. As far as I can tell, the United States has been at war since before the Civil War. Um, every single day, there, you know, at least every single year, there's been some kind of conflict going on um, somewhere in the world where soldiers have bullets in guns to either protect bases that they have or, uh, you know, take new ground against, you know, uh, insurrectionists or whatever term they, they're using for people that want to govern themselves and probably other people, too. I shouldn't say they want, they certainly don't want to govern themselves. Most of these ins, insurrectionists want to govern other people, too. But, you know, getting in their way just makes you the person governing the other people. So, I, I mean, it's it. lots of people don't want to don't want to pay the taxes. And I, I'm i absolutely uh, in 100% agreement that essentially if somebody can tax your labor, which is what an income tax is, then that person is claiming some level of ownership over your body, your will, and your, uh, your person. If they can tax your land, which is what uh, local governments claim to do with property taxes, then you don't – then they own the means of production. Every form of government that we've seen – up till now is a socialist form of government because they own the means of production. Welcome to the USSA. I, I guess there's no really <laughs> denying it with that with that line of thinking. Yeah, I mean, I think the first step is just getting kids out of these public indoctrination centers. I mean, we're never going to be free 
if we don't start teaching our children what it actually is to be free and what this so-called government that we have really does to people. Um, thanks a lot for your time, guys. Yeah, I can, can I, you brought up something that's, that's interesting to me. Oh. Mike's gonna, my son's six now. He uh, okay. he likes things like police uh, police Legos and stuff like that. He's into this stuff. Um, you can, you can believe me when he talks to my friends about police Legos, and he does. They're not that thrilled with it. I'm not either. I tell him, I'm not buying you any police Legos. Not going to do it. And you got to kind of wonder, where do, you, where do you start teaching your kid what freedom is? And where does that end? And where, do you, where does uh, you're just training them to be insane begin? Because we, our thought processes, Ken, are so far deviated from whatever's considered the norm that it would be legitimate for people to call us insane. Insane people just see the world differently. So I don't know what I'm doing here when I'm dealing with these situations. I don't want to make, I don't want to twist my son's mind, but at the same time, I want him to look at things from a critical standpoint. Well, I think that's exactly what you need to do. I mean, just, just teaching critical thinking. I mean, we don't have to teach them that this is the only way that you have to be an agorist or you have to be an anarchist. Otherwise you're an immoral person. Um, but just raise them to be, Critical, like you said, critically thinking. Wonder why? Why do I have to do this? Who's benefit? Who's benefiting from my actions doing this? You know, who benefits from my compliance with this system? But um, kids ask a lot more questions than they do. You know, they, they're they're looking for answers too. Yeah, I agree with you that uh, turning the turning the questions back on themselves can be valuable. But I think that that starts happening when they get more to that adult age of say ten, eleven, twelve. I think. I mean, at six, to some extent, I'm showing them how to use Wikipedia and the, you know, you got a question? We have the answers. They sit here right on these little uh, laptops. We can get the answer to your question. Um, you know, I'm, I'm teaching them that, but I, critical thinking is, I find it very challenging to teach a six-year-old critical thinking. <laughs> I guess is what my it's, thing is. It's definitely not simple. <laughs> Yep. Appreciate um, the call, Ted. Uh, Ken. Nothing. That's the first time. Would be thanks. <laughs> thanks. It's not an easy question. It's it's not easy. Let's go to Eric in uh, Kansas. Eric, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Uh, pronunciation of numbers. Uh, Pronunci- when, back when I first started listening to uh, Free Talk Live, you'd say eight five five four fifty three, and I thought you were saying four fifteen instead of four fifty. Oh boy. Yeah. See, this is the reason that I went to t- just saying the numbers individually because we had these uh, these issues over time. It'd, it'd be great to say because what the um, the consultant told us is that you want it to sound similar. So you say eight fifty five four fifty free, eight fifty five four fifty free, and that's how they you know they they said it to us over and over again. And, you know, you only know as much as the consultants tell you, right? So that's what we tried to do. Uh, Eric, I know you've got more. Um, just hold the line here. I'll bring you back in the next segment. It's 855-450-3733 if you want to call in and comment on any of the stuff we've talked about this evening. Slavery? What is it? Drones? Should Americans be able to bring, bring these lawsuits? Uh, it's all interesting questions. 855-453-7333. Free Talk Live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Some clubs are pricey. 25 bucks for a cheeseburger? Some are exclusive. My family came over on the Mayflower. And some are snooty. Is she wearing white after Labor Day? (gasps) But America's Best Value Wins Value Club is just right for everyone who wants to save instantly. Value Club members get 15% off, room upgrade, and late checkout when available at most of our 1,000 hotels in North America. Go to americasbestvaluein.com and sign up today. Now that's better. Amanda Bosold here from Midas Resources. Today, April 4th, 2014, gold opened at $1297.60. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for $1344.77, $672.38 for a half ounce, or $336.19 for a quarter ounce. Again, that's $1344.77, $672.38, and $336.19. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. 
Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Shoppers at a Hannaford supermarket could only speculate that the middle-aged woman angrily demanding a price check on a pack of rice pudding was once a carefree youth. I don't care what it says on your screen. You know, this is why people go to the store across the street, because of the way they're treated here. You know, nobody likes it here. Those watching the woman angrily asking for a manager over a $1.20 price difference imagined that the woman was once a fresh-faced college graduate, too spirited and fun-loving to throw a bitter tantrum in front of a room of complete strangers. She was probably once just some freewheeling college kid, you know? Her biggest concern was which one of her friends she was going to hang out with at night and whether they were going to meet at the movies or a bonfire on the beach. Now look at her. You know, I'll bet if you'd have told her 10 or 15 years ago that one day she'd be ripping into a grocery store clerk with a room full of strangers staring at her, she'd have been horrified. It's sad. In other news, a few years in the military would have really straightened out a troubled teen killed in Afghanistan, and a man on the verge of self-realization instead turns to God. This is the Onion News Network. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. 855-450-3. That's 855-450-3733. You can give us a call, talk about whatever is on your mind here in the uh, final hour of Free Talk Live Sunday edition. Free Talk Live, we do seven days a week, three hours a day. We've done that for years. Free Talk Live is live. We that, That's the commitment we make to you. We do our very best to provide live programming to you here on Free Talk Live. And we actually offer that program for free. You can get the last seven days of shows uh, at freetalklive.com. Just go there, click on them, download, listen right where you are, whatever you want to do. If you want to take them with you to work or whatever, they're there for you for free. And we have archives going back for years for free at archives.freetalklive.com. It's Mark with you. And Kurt. And Daryl. 855 free. We were speaking with Eric from Kansas. And, uh, Eric, you want to talk about the drone lawsuit? Uh, right. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of professions out there that use uh, certain words. They call it jargon. Yeah. Well, the the, the legal area uh, has its own jargon, too. Where oh, yes. Certain words mean certain things, uh, especially to judges. Um, <clears throat> and I took a quick look at the, uh, the judge's order. Yep. Uh, and and it, it, it said that the case is dismissed. But there, there's two different ways to dismiss. There's with prejudice and there's without prejudice. That's true. And with prejudice means you can't refile. Without means you can't. Okay. The, the order just says dismiss. And, and usually when it doesn't include the with prejudice, then it means without prejudice. So so these people could refile. And um, that's a good thing because I, I think they should, should reword their, their complaint and then refile. Well, generally— um, 
I, I think if something is dismissed, instead of refiling, it would make more sense to just appeal the decision. Can you? Okay, yeah, you can just, just you can appeal a dismissal. Yep. Yes. Well, and, and the best thing you can hope to get right. is press because they're really not going to rule against the president. Right. So the judge says here, um, I just want to read part of what she said in her d- decision. You you brought it up, so I get the The question presented is whether federal officials can be held personally liable for their roles in drone strikes abroad that target U.S. and kill U.S. citizens. The question raises fundamental issues regarding constitutional principles and is not easy to answer. So here you have a woman who is uh, a judge in the only dispute resolution organization that is, well, I guess I suppose the supreme dispute resolution organization in this country, the Federal uh, Bureau of Courts or whatever it's called. And she says, this is an interesting question. And then she goes about dismissing the case. I, I just, I'm stunned by that. I've and got to say. Must the, not have been that interesting. Yeah, the the that article interesting. that I read on this from, I believe it was antiwar.com, said that her dismissal of the case was almost verbatim taken from the government's filing in their objection to the initial case. Yeah, basically she she granted their motion to dismiss. So, yes. There you go. So, Eric? Yeah, and, and, and the thing is, it's because of the wording that was used. I, I was talking about the jargon. Um, the reason it was dismissed is because when they filed, they used the word negligence. Okay, and and so that 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 word has a certain meaning. Yeah. Uh, even even if the people filing the complaint didn't mean it uh, the way the court understood it, the court that that's a key word for the court. So so it sees it a certain way. I see. And that's why you you, you wouldn't want to appeal this because you used the wrong word. Okay. And so you want to refile. Well, I hope it does, and, but and you know, how we, it's been it was 2011 this occurred. I hate justice's terrible swift sword because it swings so utterly glacially slow. In this country, you're, you have a right to a speedy trial. They talk about, uh, like I said, justice's terrible swift sword. You know, there's all these lies about how fa- fast the court system works. It's the slowest, worst organization. It's never going to get any better without any competition, and you can't have any competition. Eric, thanks for the call. Well, the, the, go ahead. The, uh, the, the key point I was going to make is is rather than saying negligence, they need to say deliberate indifference. There you go. Okay, and, and then and then it would 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 probably pass this judge, and she would let it go on to the discovery phase. Uh, well, basically, n- negligence just means they weren't paying attention enough, whereas deliberate indifference would be say, saying. You know, based upon the history of these drone, drone strikes killing people other than the targets, then then these people going ahead and using these drones are, are really using deliberate indifference rather than something negative. Well, hopefully Petraeus and Panetta don't die in the next two and a half years when we finally get around to this the next time around. Thanks for the call, Eric. I I mean, it's just so it's so frustrating um, seeing this stuff. Let's go to Richard on the Skype line. Richard, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? What's happening there, Mark? I totally dig the Mark days, and I've listened to Free Talk Live since like 07, and just not too in with the condescending Darwin voice. But uh, I think it's great. Like, yeah, the Darwin, he's just like, I don't know, he must be Ian's boyfriend or something, but I I don't know. Oh, Darren. (laughs) He's right here. Daryl? Darwin. Isn't it Darwin? Daryl? I, I think it's Darwin. No, well, Dar- I don't know. There, there, I guess I dream a genie kind of set your nickname. But there's, um, um, there's also a Derek J. So I, uh, maybe you got confused. No, there. no, Derek J. is pretty cool. He's got lots of cool things to say. He's never kind of or whatever. But uh, I, I just think, uh, you know, I love Free Talk Live. I've listened like seven years now, and uh, I, I just think it's great. It's great to get the kind of message of liberty out to people and stuff. But. Uh, Darwin, dude, you just you really got to take a chill pill. Somebody ought to get him a Darryl? Xanax. Yeah, Daryl. Thank you. Why? Darwin. Daryl. No, <laughs> my name is Daryl. No, it's Darwin. Okay. And it's just, uh, anyway, good luck. Best luck. Mark, keep it up. Keep Thanks. living off grid. Have chickens and goats and all that. <laughs> yeah, chickens and, gr- chickens and goats aren't going to keep us free, but it is, uh, it's kind of a good thing for the kid. You know, there you go, man. <laughs> this is what it's like having a career that's open, wide open for anybody to call in. <laughs> 
<laughs> Congratulations. Let's go to Adam calling in from Wisconsin. You're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind, Adam? Hey, uh, so there was a the lady called to, or I mean, tried to sue the government for damages for the uh, for the drone strikes, right? Yes. It, well, it's actually um, a, a, so some family. The, but yeah. you, the family of the person that you killed, Mark, should they be able to sue you for damages? Um, I, I guess that they have wrongful death. Is this Dave from last night? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Dave from Wisconsin? Or Adam from Wisconsin? I get confused here. You've used several different names and called in from different no, places. Those are both my names. Both of those are your names? Do you live at, were yeah. you are were you in Miami last night and you're now you're in Wisconsin and you were in Denver the first time you called? Yeah, there's this new thing. It's called a plane. Okay. That's what was happening, right? Like you're telling me the truth, you were in all those places. You don't live in Keene, New Hampshire, and you don't have a problem with my politics. So that's I why you're not live in Keene, New Hampshire. Okay. I do not live in New Hampshire, period. All right. So, And you were in Miami last night, and you were in uh, uh, Denver the, a couple of nights ago. Uh, about a week and a half ago, I was in Denver for a couple of days. It's called travel for business. It, it, it could happen, right? It could happen. You could not be a big, fat liar trying to hold me to some higher form of, uh, of freedom, uh, or higher form of uh, justice than you're willing to, to no. give. No. So only the form that, that you say that you espouse to. Well, I'm wanting you to tell the truth. Where are you and what's your name? You say it's Adam, you I'm say it's David. I'm, I'm Thanks for the call. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now, thanks to Dan Pillow, you can get the tax help you need to end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pillow. I've helped thousands of people reduce or eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. With the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. Or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though, it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free, it doesn't require a big time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MineThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MineThings.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Hi, I'm Montel Williams. Most of you know me as a talk show host, but I'm also an author, actor, single father of four, a fitness writer, avid snowboarder, and I'm also a medical marijuana patient. Like many of the million people who are living with multiple sclerosis, I'm in pain every single day. 
And sometimes my nerves are so raw that if you brushed up against me in an elevator, I'd scream. I can't sleep at night from the pain, and sometimes the spasms in my legs are so intense they will wake me up throughout the night. I've tried the strongest prescription medications available, and I'm going to tell you, they do not work. In fact, they leave me in a stupor, and most of the time, it's impossible to even live your life. Now, I've tried medical marijuana, and I'm going to tell you something, it works. If you'd like more information about medical marijuana, you can contact the Marijuana Policy Project at mpp.org or call 1-877-JOIN-MPP. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. You can give us a call and talk about whatever is on your mind on the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live with Mark. And Kurt. And Daryl. 855-453-FREE. We've been talking about BuzzBox Coffee here on Free Talk Live for a few months now, and it's really great coffee. It's high-end coffee. It's uh, top 1% Arabica-grade coffee. It's organically grown, which I think in third-world countries is kind of important, you know, places that may not have banned DDT and uh, leaded gas. Um, Coffee, by the way, is a really absorbent crop, so that makes it a bit even more um, important. Shade-grown, if you get that acid reflux thing, you should try shade-grown coffee because in a lot of ways it doesn't have the acidity that the Robusto does. BuzzBox is like many um, high-end coffees in that it tastes great, but it's unlike most of them in that what they, the way they go about their sort of uh, uh, social activity with the people that they work with. Not only do they give loans to people to join their coffee co-op so that they can buy coffee exclusively from families that work hard to uh, grow coffee in a sustainable fashion, shade-grown, without uh, wrecking the environment. But um, the environment where they live, you know, it's most important to them. <laughs> but they also uh, give, uh, allow us, work with us to uh, supply microloans through World Vision, which is an organization that uh, gives microloans to people for all variety of reasons so that they can live better lives, work their way up. This is how your ancestors did it. You're, if you're living in the United States, you're in already the top 10% of earners in the world. Congratulations. Your uh, ancestors had the opportunity to not have as much stolen from them as other people's ancestors, and that's why they haven't managed to work quite so uh, so high up. And I want to give them the opportunity. Coffee.freetalklive.com will give you that opportunity, too. You go there, you get a free pound of coffee. They know you want to try it out. They want to see what it's like. That's cool. Try it. Coffee.freetalklive.com. You're signing up for a subscription program at that time. You can cancel at any point. You get your pound of coffee, you say, Fuck, I hate high end delicious coffee. You can cancel it. It's cool. Cancel it. Coffee, but uh, if you don't, they'll just keep on sending you coffee, and it's awesome coffee. It, they'll, you can decide how much you want, get, want it to get sent how often you want it sent, and it'll take care of that coffee issue in your life. You'll no longer have to shop for delicious coffee any longer. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Let's go to Wit, calling in from Arizona. Wit, you're on Free Talk Live. Yes, I just want to point out that one is anti-Islamist, does not make one anti-Islam. Okay. And one in support, and one in support of or defending the dropping of the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki does not make one anti-Jap, a word I never used on your station, by the way, ever. This isn't a station, this is a show. Um, And I don't want to talk about what happened in the past, Wit. Um, I I want to talk about issues, and I'm happy to do that. Wit, I will drop you if you... Wit, Wit, listen to me. Listen to me, Wit. Wit, I will put you on hold. And you're going on hold, Wit. Okay? You going to listen to me? Wit, I'm not going to talk to you about what occurred in the past. There are tens of thousands of people listening to this program, and you keep on calling in and saying, you did this to me, you did that to me. This isn't a uh, arbitration organization. You call in, be interesting, let's talk about a new topic. 
do you want to talk about Islamists versus Islam, or do you want to talk about uh, the dropping of bombs on uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima, which we've talked about a lot, or do you want to talk about something entirely different? Mark, are yes, you there? Sir. I am. Very good, because I wanted to have the opportunity to respond to the verbal parting shots, shots and verbal bombs that you dropped on me on, on last night and that Ian dropped on me Thursday night. And uh, if you if first tell the truth, Ian, and then allow me to give the Ian's uh, not opinion. here. But right, I know. Wait a second. Ian's not listening to me, or Ian didn't, didn't just respond to me when I, I think, cut on the air. I think Ian's on a on an airplane at this point. And I'm glad to see you're listening, uh, Wit. I get you guys' voices mixed up. Okay, in the studio is just went on the Mark rant, and Kurt on the rant, and Daryl. Whoever just went on the rant just now about me. That's me. That was Mark. Mark. That's Mark. I'm just as uh, irritated right. with you okay. as okay. as as Ian is. Right, honestly, Mark. Mark. Hey, Mark. Okay. Allow me to respond to something you dropped a verbal bomb on me. I know that was you last night about me suggesting that I wanted to bomb somebody into the Stone Age. See, yeah. I've never said such a thing, That's and I don't a, believe but, but There's an intimation. You you, wait, thing. don't no, act no, no, like no, there's no... Wit, 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 do not act like there's okay. no such thing as an intimation. You said... Last night, that the the reason that uh, Germany and J- Japan were not uh, there wasn't any kind of uh, uprising afterwards was because they were so thoroughly defeated. How do you propose to go about thoroughly defeating Islamists? Okay, so you entirely intimated the wrong thing because I just was pointing out that we actually did bomb Germany and Japan into submission, and they finally did quit murdering people on a massive scale. Like, they both did, were evil empires that did murder people in the millions, in the millions. Okay, but as has the United States government. Look, a million, you're just just taking numbers. You, look, the folks no, in Panama, wait, the wait, folks the in Nicaragua, two. the folks down in the Philippines that had to deal with the U.S. military at the turn, um, you know, from the, the the turn of the 19th to the 20th centuries, those people probably didn't like the United States much either. It's only an issue of okay. degrees. Many I, I many I, people okay. in the um, you know the Native American communities consider the United States government to be conquerors. It's only you, what you call an evil empire is just an issue of degrees. Okay, and then the degree that I have in economics and all the classes I took in poli-sci and all the world, the real world I live in, not a Game of Thrones, Mark, we propped up the governments of Germany and Japan in 1945, and they're both rich and prosperous and relatively free uh, in, in my world, maybe not yours, countries, that I would, you and I would both could have this conversation on the public radio and not have to worry about somebody capping me. But by the way, uh, about the Middle East... Is somebody going to cap you? Again, I, ne- I never and never, ever, ever, ever would advocate the bombing of any innocent people in the Middle East. That's what, but, you, but you did I advocate the bombing of innocent people in Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Yeah, you said 70 it. 70 years ago. It that doesn't matter. When you say and it's okay, was, no, it, it matters, says it's okay. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. It doesn't matter? Yes, it does. It happened. And again, Germany and Japan are relatively free, rich, and prosperous countries today because except we for, the, up except for the people who died, we literally did not, prop not up so free. Who's we? See, this is the problem, though. Wit, no, you, the, we, see, the, wit, the, you take this as some kind of psych- of America. I'm not saying it was you. I'm not saying it was me because I wasn't alive either. I'm not saying uh, it's a generalization. It's okay to generalize, uh, generalize as long as you're not smearing people like Ian does all. The time. I'm going to smear you too, Wit. The fact is that. But let me respond. Go ahead, no. smear me. Yeah, yeah. The fact is, is that. Smear me and let me respond. You're welcome. Speak freely and smear me and let me, let me respond. Be when a man. you advocate for murder, you become an advocate for murder. The oh fact my is. God. That... Murder? I'm not advocating when murder. When you drop a bomb, That's the Whit. worst thing in the Dro- world. That's Whit. the worst thing a person can do is commit murder. Work. Killing Whit. and murder you... are not the same thing. When you drop a bomb on innocent people, you are you become a murderer. We the people in Nagasaki and Hiroshima people were not innocent. Yes, they were. You, I've I, already said that. Right, and that's the thing. When you kill, when you kill a nine-month-old well, child and then you advocate for it, you become an advocate for murder. I'm not advocating it. I'm defending it, and it was for the greater oh, good. Okay, Nagasaki you're a defender of murder. Now, thanks to the United States of America. 
Nagasaki is a beautiful city thanks God, to United States what are, America. What are you trying what to get across? Wait, the real world. What is the you point? Live the oh, I live in the real world where we bomb people. Yes, is that what you're trying to get across? Where you ought to live and you would enjoy it. And it's because of the United States of America. If they had won the war, or if they had had a topic tree in 1945, they would have used it on a massive scale. They already like, lost like, the like, war when the bomb you know was dropped. You know God. Over and over again. How many times do I have to talk about Nagasaki and Hiroshima? Every time Wit calls, apparently. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just wondering. It, I'm oh, so frustrating. I don't care. I'm surprised you don't have a degree in law for how he parses words. Yeah, he's a defender, not an advocate. Isn't it the same thing? Yes. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. People are waking up. People are saying no to GMO, gluten, toxins, and sugars. The masses are moving to holistic, natural, and organic foods and supplements. Life Change Tea is a non-GMO, gluten-free product that helps your body overcome sickness and obesity. You need to order to experience the change. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Or call us at 928-308-0408. Again, 928-308-0408. You need to order to experience your health change. GetTheTea.com. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light System today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653. Or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. 
855-453. There I am, giving the telephone number. It's the final segment. I might be able to slide you in if you manage to get your call in quick enough. That's 855-453. The final segment of the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live. It's Darwin with you. And Darwin. And Darwin. It's a bunch of Darwins here on Free Talk Live. That means we get the Darwin Award, right? (laughs) I hope not. I'll tell you what word you can get. You can get my everlasting thanks. If you go to shop.freetalklive.com and do your online shopping, we've got an Amazon link there, I think a New Egg link, um, and uh, several other links. And if you do your shopping through shop.freetalklive.com, it's an extra click, I know, an extra click to get to where you're going. You can actually bookmark it and always um, head in through our affiliate link at Amazon, or excuse me, at uh, shop.freetalklive.com. And we get a little bit of credit. Amazon gives us up to a 7% uh, spiff for sending them the business. You get the same prices, the same service as usual on Free Talk Live. I'll tell you, that uh, <laughs> that link really provides us with some revenue uh, every month. And I thank you, everybody, who uses it. Let's go to Fred calling in from California. Fred, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? It's Daryl or Mark? <laughs> it's Mark. I, uh yeah, hey, I just wanted to call in. And uh, uh, in regards to um, you had Monty Williams um, uh, on uh, several minutes ago advocating the use of marijuana in, in terms of fighting pain. I'm not uh, sure what we're talking about here. Maybe that was an ad that you heard on your particular uh, venue for listening. So um, anyway, go, go ahead with okay. what you're thinking. Yeah, well, I just want to add this to that. Uh, I've been in chronic pain since 87 and in bed with it since 2000. Uh, so you're in bed. You're in bed with pain right now. Oh yeah. Okay. And uh, 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 you know, I mean, I've had five back fusions. I've got hardware all up and down my back. Mm. And uh, um, just just to let you know, um, medical marijuana does help a little bit in my situation. Um, one thing though that really helped me, and I want to share this to all those people out there, including Monty Williams, but that suffer from chronic pain, is juicing vegetables. And uh, my last fusion was 2010. I was going downhill in 2012. And uh, he turned to me and said, Dad, try, why don't you try juicing? And I did. And, why not, right? Uh, why not? And I said that after the first week, like, why not? If one class is doing this much, I'll try two. I, uh, but um, it works tremendously. And essentially what it does, and this is what the, the medical field uh Probably hasn't watched it, I know, but um, it, your your body is naturally alkaline. It's seven point three five, and when you eat sugar and junk food and processed food, <laughs> it sends it sends it into the acidic level, and it also uh, it also lowers your oxygen content in your blood, and it creates an inflammatory condition, and it makes your pain worse. And it's also an environment where it's warm, acidic, and low in oxygen. And that causes cancer and a lot of other problems. So I just mm. wanted to those people know that, you know, Mark, if you're in chronic pain right now, uh, uh, get juicing a try. You know, uh, I'm not in chronic really- pain, but I don't, I, I mean, it's hard to argue against juicing. You know, I mean, it's hard to say, hey, you know what would be terrible for you if you took some beets, some celery, uh, some uh, maybe some cucumbers. I hate cucumbers, but some uh, my my wife's constantly using cilantro, parsley, uh, spinach. She uses a variety of these. Now, she doesn't juice. She does uh, these things called a green drink with a um, uh, basomatic with a vitamin with a vitamin. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about, but with a Vitamix um, and it uh, spins them really fast. And so it has a lot more pulp to it. But I've gone to these places where they do the the, the vegetable juicing. Yeah, it's delicious. But There's no doubt about it. It's it, expensive as could possibly be, but it is delicious. And yeah, who's going to do badly right. from consuming a whole lot more vegetables? Uh, you can't do veg bad, but it, uh, you get a lot of relief from it. And, and uh, for those in chronic pain out there, explore it. The one thing I want to warn you about, I ended up in the emergency room after the second week because I w- if one glass work, two is better. Yeah. Well, what it, uh, uh, I was on 27 medications, okay, everything from methadone, uh, fentanyl, morphine, oxycodone, and it, it, you name it, and then the psychotropic drug. And what happened was when you juice, it takes all these toxins out of your tissue. Oh, my goodness. And I, and, yeah, I ended up passing out in the doctor's office, and I ended up in the emergency room, and uh, they gave me Narcan, and, uh, uh, 
and so I was reading the paperwork when I was released five hours later, and it said, caution, we have just treated you for a drug overdose, and it was giving you all these, uh, you know, help centers and needle exchange programs and stuff. So if you are taking a lot of medications, uh, please, yeah, please get in touch with somebody that knows about juicing and start into it slowly. Interesting. But I, can't I wouldn't have thought for a second juicing would have been an issue with this, but I, I mean, I'm thanks so much for the call and uh, letting folks know about that, Fred, because I think a lot of people want to know about that. Um, I, I love the, the juice thing. Let's go to Corey in um, Georgia. Corey, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Uh, I just wanted to talk about, uh, you know, redemption and repentance and um, what the best – um, sometimes the best apologies for actions in the past are. Okay. Um, you know, after um, my wife and I had a lot of problems in the past, um, and one time after we got back together, we saw this billboard, and I can't remember why we saw it, but it said, uh, "Actions in the future, uh, better actions in the future are the best apologies for actions in the past." Mm -hmm. um, and so today, uh, I live my life. Um, making up for the things that I've done in the past, and I'm very aware of the things that I've done in the past. I stay very um, aware of them. And there's been a self it's been kind of a self-righteous caller calling in the last couple of days who's kind of irked me. Um, who, who I don't think he understands that, that, that I think we're all on our own path, um, working on our own things. You know? Yeah, this guy has so, been calling in and calling me out for um, you know the the crime that I was sent to prison for. He seems to have little concern for what really happened and more concern for just sort of calling me out is what it, it looks like. He's also admitted that he he dis disagrees with me in a political um, fashion. So oftentimes that's the case. People look for that weak link and uh, and go after me. And yeah, I, I try to live a good life. I don't know what you want from me. What do you want? Exactly. I've apologized That's on the air I... many, many times. It gets hard and hollow to apologize for something that happened 30 years ago that kind of happened without me ever knowing what was going to happen. Like, it just happened to me. And you paid yeah. your so-called debt to society. But he wants me to pay yeah. more. More paying. Yeah. I mean, what, if I if I lay here and I stab myself in the gut like the uh, Japanese generals and, and I bleed out, is that going to help anybody? Is that going to make the world a better place? Is my wife going to be better off? Is my six-year-old son going to be better off? Is that all you got? Right. <laughs> that, I mean, he might he might just say, is that all you got? You know, Yeah, you, right. You, He's never going to be happy because yeah. he disagrees with me politically. You need more guts hates, to spill. He hates my ideas, <laughs> not who I am, but he makes an ad hominem exactly. attack against me. And I don't know what to do exactly. about the that. Best, the best thing that me and you can do are take responsibility in our lives every day, um, living out uh, goodness towards others. You know, I think that's what libertarianism is all about. Is it's it's not about just being personally free, but it's about being responsible for your community and your society and realizing that. You know, I uh, I say that I'm a I'm a cultural communist but i'm actually i mean i'm i'm a capitalist i mean I'm, I'm an arco capitalist is the best way to put it but you know i would love to i think it's a terrible term people. personally <laughs> yeah well i know but it's a you know i want to live in a society where everyone values human life so much where everyone does that they will do what they need to for each other you know and i want to foster that i want to uh help that grow and, and those kind of sentiments grow between people um, you know, but I still believe in the tenets of capitalism. I believe that people value things and they trade based on that and they, they, they make calculated decisions. Well, what you um, mean by capitalism is different than what other people mean by capitalism. Um, I like the exactly. idea of a free market where people can try different ideas. If you want to do a, the most communist of co-ops and uh, create a place yeah. where everybody lives and, and, and beats on seven grains to create the most wholesome bread that they then uh, sell at, a, at no profit at all, just, just enough to value their labor, whatever it is that they tell themselves in this place, you know, I think that they should be – they should have the right to do that um, – but there will still be private property in that commune. There will still be things that people are so attached to, I believe. They don't that, call that, that capitalism, though. They don't think that inside of I, capitalism I, can exist other things, is what I'm saying. I know. Um, yeah. Some people believe that, and that, that's, that's being too rigid with concepts, I think. I think that a lot of our issues in America come from being too rigid with concepts. You know, people get the, the, 
to communism and capitalism, and they think that they're mutually exclusive. Um, and in some ways, they might be technically. Um, Corey, but, I appreciate the call. Thank you so much for for, for yeah, making it. Thank you. Yep. So that's it. Another edition of Free Talk Live. Kurt, I want to uh, thank you so much for sitting in. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Daryl, thank you for k- filling in here where uh, Stephanie and Brian are. Anytime. Away. And you can check us out at freetalklive.com. In the meantime, participate on our boards, add stories. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Do you love coffee as much as I love coffee? Here's a delicious way to drink the best of the best coffee and make a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox Coffee. And you can try a pound for free. All you do is cover shipping. It's organic, shade-grown, top 1% Arabica grade. 10% of future purchases help our efforts to give the gift of human freedom.